Hello and good evening, listeners. It is us, Dragon's Greed Gaming, and we are back for some more Mork's Mad Boys, our Warhammer 40,000 actual play series. We're playing Wrath and Glory, the revised edition, and we are all orcs and all green. So welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as always... Be sure you stop by the Facebook page for all the latest news. Check out our YouTube channel where you can uh, subscribe and help us grow there. Or stop by the old iTunes or Apple Podcasts and give us a review to help get our name out there a little bit more. And of course, if you feel so inclined, if you'd like to do more than that, you can always stop by our Patreon page where we've got a couple different tiers of rewards and things that you can get your grubby little mitts on. So check us out there if you'd like. And uh, if you're already a patron, thank you so much. We really appreciate all that you guys do. Uh, and if you're not a patron, that's okay too. Uh, we appreciate you just stopping by and listening. So hopefully uh, you've enjoyed what we've done so far and we've got plenty more to come. Uh, we will not have Kyle here tonight, so Gravescorch is going to be taking a back seat. He couldn't make it tonight, uh, but we should have the gang back together next week. So we'll just have to let our three remaining orcs uh, hog the spotlight a bit more tonight. So with that in mind, let's do our round table. Tell us who you are and who you're playing, your objective for tonight. Uh, it sounds like everybody spent some XP, so tell our listeners about that and any other cool stuff you want to mention. So, let's start it off with the frog. Yeah, I'm the frog. Today I'll be playing Brug of Arg Steel Ripper, and uh, I'll be trying to apply the cunning of the orc god Mork to some issue that comes up in this session. Uh, I spent a little bit of XP on toughness. Um, I mean, survivability, I'm learning is something that you shouldn't skimp on. Uh, so that's where I'm at. And yeah, things are going pretty well. This weekend for me has been the uh, the weekend of Talk and Tar, which is to say I saw both the, the like, Oscar bait movie about a... Um, orchestra director tar and uh james cameron's avatar the way of water they were both pretty good okay oh uh, well, i don't know what the first one is that you mentioned so uh i don't really have anything to say about that it's a solid film uh there's a a little detail at the end that i think elevates it for me personally to being like a 10 out of 10 masterpiece but it is quite good, but wow. very like Oscar thirsty. So there's a lot of drama stuff, and I know people. I don't know if you, you're into sci-fi and people make fun of the tech speak and junk that they do. Is like, well, the warp drive. <laughs> Basically, there's a lot of that, but for music, like where, unless you're really plugged in to the music scene and like. By music, I don't mean just like listening to music, but being like in an orchestra, it's mm -hmm. gonna sound like complete alien gibberish. Gotcha. A lot of a lot of orchestra gar uh, jargon. Yeah. Gotcha. It's got some well, and so it's fun. I don't know much about that, so I'd be lost. But if you're into that, that is that's okay with me. Uh, did we watch any good movies? Uh, no, but I did watch the first episode of Last of Us. And can you fucking believe it? It was incredible. Awesome. Easily the best video game to media adaptation that there's been thus far. And everybody's wondering, like, there's some secret recipe. There's no secret. They just stuck true to the source material. Ho oh, ho, fucking figure that one out. Oh, and it was good. Man, it only took like 25 years. You got a game with a great story, put that story on the big screen, boom. Not that hard, right? I just I just don't get it. And for all the, for all the Bella Ramsey Ramsey haters out there because she doesn't look like Ellie, right? I was definitely like, eh, I don't know about her when they casted her because I kind of felt the same way. But man, 
she nailed it with the attitude that Ellie has of just being like a tough a tough little kid and it just, it was awesome so for anybody who's still a hater just fucking shut up and don't watch the show then because you don't know what you're talking about uh, and Pedro Pascal was of course amazing everybody was the show's awesome so far so really looking forward to uh, another another episode this week that should be exciting did you guys watch it yet? I have not no no I don't so, have HBO Max but you know I might get it for once the full season's out so I can just binge it yeah, man, that's what I did for uh, the last season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. So, you you binged that suffering? I don't think it was bad. I don't hate it like a lot of people do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's things I would have rather seen change, but I think sure. uh, I think for how it went down, like you know, a lot of people complain that it seemed like uh, Daenerys kind of went off the deep end, like at random, but. I don't know, man. I kind of felt that all building up, and when they're actually attacking King's Landing, there's a scene where... Uh, pardon my cat, by the way, in the background. Um, there's the scene where she's riding her dragon, and they're sieging the city, and they, like, zoom in on her face, and it's, like, right there, like, you realize, like, that's where she's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done trying to appease everybody. I'm gonna do it my way. And unfortunately, that meant she was gonna kill a bunch of innocent people. So, They're in King's Landing. Are they really innocent? Come on. Yeah, probably it's like not. Vegas. Yeah. So, no, I I enjoyed it. I was sad that Varys died. Uh, I mean, I'm glad he made it to the second to last episode, but he's probably my favorite character. Um, and I thought it was really cool that he just tried to he tried to be loyal to the you know his kingdom the whole time. He just went about it in a very unorthodox way. So, uh, but yeah, check out last of us um i highly recommend it you, you'll be getting updates every week so we'll be we'll be back next time with that so uh let's hear from the war boss how's eric doing tonight good evening uh i am playing Loctar, the war boss um i did spend some xp as well on feel no pain because i also feel like survivability is important to the war boss <laughs> Is is that the one that uh, you ignore being injured? Yeah, so I no longer take the penalty to DN for being wounded. That's and awesome. my wound trade is increased by my rank. Oh, it does that too. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, and then my objective tonight is to overcome a situation by extolling the virtue of Fasta is better. All right. We will see how that works out. Uh, my weekend's been pretty uh, not so exciting. Uh, found out I have to go on a work trip next week. Uh, last minute, so I'm kind of just getting ready for that. Well, what does that entail? Uh, going to Atlanta for about two to three, two and a half days. Oh. So I haven't. I haven't traveled before for like uh, this sort of thing, so it was kind of like a surprise. We'll just kind of be meetings and kind of figuring out the future of one of our projects. Gotcha. Well, I get to move into a new office at work because oh. we have a new uh, director. Well. She's working in another office right now, but she'll eventually be stationed out of ours. So they uh it was like where where are we gonna like put her? There's no there's no actual like open offices. Like we need she needs a place to work, you know? Oh. So they had uh there was an office that could fit two people that um two random regionals were like using, but they're like maybe there once a month if that. So my boss was like, Yeah, they don't need an office space. We're here every day, so they took their stuff out. She moved there. I'm probably going to move into her office. And then the new person's going to take my office. Which doesn't really mean anything. It's just moving to the next room over. But, you okay. know, I'll be away from the front door so people won't just gawk at me when they come in and be like, can you help That's me? That's a little nice. Yeah. Why, look hourly? No, I can't help you. Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... um. 
And yeah, getting some work done on those uh, Chaos Warriors, man. Now that I have a new phone uh, with a proper working camera, I can't wait. We're going to finally record our first episode of uh, Tale of Four Gamers next week. So that will be coming soon, listeners. It will be here eventually. All right. And last but certainly not least, our good friend Sean. Hello, it is Sean. I am still playing Peppa MD, the doctor, uh, Pain Boy Peppa. Uh, I rolled the objective, solve a problem with the brutality of the orc god Gork. So I guess I'll try to do something brutal today. Uh, oh, I spent so we, got, we got the or the Gork and the Mork <laughs> uh, objectives tonight. Okay. Yep, yeah, it, it's a sign, Chris. Things are going to get crazy. <laughs> uh, I also spent XP on toughness, uh, because as we have all, all said... <laughs> survivability is good and when a fucking sergeant throws a grenade and gets a critical and everyone takes fucking five mortal wounds <laughs> oh what were the odds man that guy man he deserves a promotion yeah he earned his xp for sure <laughs> so uh now peppa's toughness six yeah so. sensing a theme here <laughs> yeah don't die that's the goal yeah um didn't really do anything crazy. I watched the start of the second season of Vox Machina, the Critical Role TV show. Still fun. Enjoyable. Yeah, if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I like <laughs> animated TV shows. and It's basically D&D, &D, but they, I guess they don't give them royalties, so whatever. Just playing. I've, never, I've only watched part of an episode of uh, Critical Role, so I cannot speak ill or good of them. Uh... But I have been listening to uh, a podcast that's been doing some of the new Blade Runner RPG. Ooh. And of course, like now that's all I want to play. So <laughs> I don't know if it was a good idea to start listening to it, but <laughs> it's been pretty cool so far. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I am your host, the Great Unclean One, and not a whole lot going on, although I have been playing a lot of the Battlefleet Gothic Armada video game, which I got on Steam, uh, I think it was last year, maybe, or this year, I don't remember. It was just a couple bucks on sale, and uh, I'm trying to, like, complete games now, rather than trying to fish for achievements or other stupid shit. I realize I'm enjoying that a lot more, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, man, this game is awesome. Like, it really itches the scratch that I've been having for, like, playing old school BFG. And uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. I took out the Terminus S, uh, Typhus's flagship. Ooh. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I guess a bunch of different Chaos Champions show up, and his was the first one, so I went after that. Uh, so took him out. And then I've... Um, uh, I've, I've saved a few planets from being exterminatist by the Inquisitor, so that's been pretty cool. And then I just got to uh, Chapter 4, and the full Black Cru Crusade is in full swing, and Abaddon's planet killer has shown up and blown up a planet. So, it's, uh, yeah, the map, the map is just filling with red dots of enemies attacking and taking over planets, so it, uh... It's like one of those, like, everything's going wrong, so it's just mitigate as much as you can. And it's it really gives you, the, like, a feeling like it's just so overwhelming how much shit is going on. There's Orc and Eldar pirates causing more problems, too. So, it's a shame you can't play as the other races in the single-player campaign, but I think you can in the second game. So, um, yeah, I definitely want to play some Orcs now that we've been doing this. That's pretty cool. I have... Uh some BFG ships on my painting desk right now that I'm working on. We're going to try and do something with some friends out here. Are you doing orcs? No, <laughs> we're doing uh, we're doing with our heresy armies. Oh, so okay, got, got, cool. We got the Conqueror uh, I'm painting up and uh, World Leader Fleet. What is the Conqueror? Is that a name ship? Yeah, that's Angron's flagship. Oh, okay, cool. cool. And, uh, they put the Ursus Claws, the giant harpoons on it. So they, Did like, they... punch other ships and, like, drag them in. Now, I, I remember in BFG Armada, the expansion that they released for uh, for the, the miniatures game, they had added rules for marking your fleet if you were Chaos. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I know the Terminus S actually had a miniature. Did they do any other named ships for, like, the other gods or anything like that? Uh, so I don't know if they made them. Um, there's actually a pretty big heresy community around Battlefleet right now. Oh, Um, cool. Like, one of the podcasts kind of created a fan supplement, uh, for where they kind of, like, put together a Legion list, and then, uh... That's awesome. Kind of how to theme each one, each legion's list to theirs. So like world leaders still get like the mark of corn to give them extra for boarding action. And then they Ooh. kind of updated some rules on the flagships for each legion as well. Gotcha. Yeah, because I remember you could actually have admirals in your fleet in Armada, <laughs> and they actually added rules for having Abaddon if you played Chaos. So yeah. I don't know if there were any other like real named characters though, other than him. That's you know, what like 20, 30 years ago? A long yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, I think that game came out when I was in grade school. I remember... I yeah, I remember Tyler was... He, he drew the uh, the cover art uh, from the, the core box. And I, yeah, I think, man, we were like in like 7th or 8th grade. Oh. So yeah, it's been a while. I, think I, I, had, I had a huge Imperial fleet, but I eventually sold it. But I had it fully painted. Oh, Good nice. stuff, man. I think I only played like one game back then. I think it, I think Sean was trying to get it running in the GW and Gurney. Oh yeah, I remember Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I only played a handful of games. Um, all I remember is that Necrons were nasty. Man, they were they were a rough, rough thing to fight. But, and my my ships always failed their leadership tests. We'd always joke that I had a commissar just going around killing all my captains because everybody kept failing at everything. Oh, good times. Well, listeners, uh, we don't have BFG here, but we've got the next best thing, which is Orcs in Space. So, alas, we left. Du Bois had continued their trance, their little trip to Telesaurus Bliss, the pleasure world. You guys had unfortunately lost Headhacka in a high-speed chase down one of the highways as you were being pursued by the PDF forces. Uh, however, our new orc, our new hero, uh, Steel Ripper, had showed up to save the day. And after you guys either eluded or destroyed the vehicles that were chasing you, you made your way to a nearby airstrip landing platform where it seemed like the PDF uh, force was kind of using as a uh, as a staging ground. And once you're all your remaining orcs caught up, you guys put the pedal to the metal and broke into said airstrip. And uh, it was not long before you were taking down squads of drop troopers and then fighting on top one of the landing pads, getting your hands uh, and your feet inside one of the Valkyrie cockpits and all sorts of may- mayhem and chaos as uh that sergeant scored a critical hit and pretty much hit everybody uh, with his grenade. But you were victorious, slaying the PDF troopers and looting every last vehicle that you could, returning to the wreckage of the Mad Boy module, repairing it, getting it dragged out of the dirt, and taking what was left of the boys, which, all things considered, uh, were still plenty of them, and made your way back to the Vindication to the cheers and joy of the rest of the orcs uh, being lauded as as daring heroes and uh, a lot of excitement is now going through the tribe as you have returned with lots of loot, uh, stolen vehicles, and scrap. So that is where we will pick up as we have returned you guys are on board the Vindication again. Uh, Peppa, I don't know if you're on the Vindication or the Purging Fury since you're its captain. I'll let you decide where you're at right now. Uh, but it sounds like it's time to decide what to do next. So we will start the scene there. Uh, Peppa would probably be on the main ship with them if we're deciding where to, <laughs> where to jump next. Sure. Well, I had my doubts about you lot. Now that we've got all of these uh, birds and vehicles in the hangar bay, I think we might be able to call it square. Like, why didn't you think we could do it? 
oh, uh, you just have a history of just leaving ruin and destruction in your wake. Uh, you may not have seen me in the crowd, but I'm Brugavog Steel Ripper, one of the lead mechanics of the Suns. Death Hammer's boys. And you all did quite a number on our bikes during that race. We had to win, you know. I mean, what we were supposed to do. No, I, I suppose I get that. But uh, let me do a little quick math for you here. Of the eight of you racing, uh, six in total were completely destroyed. Plus... Amazingly, two others that weren't even involved in the race. <laughs> so I I believe that would be a 100% rate of destruction by, fr from what I've witnessed of your prior. Those are rookie numbers. We can get them all. Let's try harder next time, boss. Yeah, it sounds like the math checks out. <laughs> anyway, got my eyes on you, especially Pepper what I do. Oh, well, if we had few of bikes riddled with slag, you and your bolters ripping holes in every which way. You, right. Who do you think has to fix all of that? Death Hammer? <laughs> I don't think so. Hey, well, you well, want to well, well. talk about slagged vehicles, you should talk to uh, Bernie McBurn's hands over here. Or, uh, uh, you know, head hacker, Mork rest his soul. Um, you know, blowing everything up. You know how many craters we left behind? Melted? There's more potholes, more potholes in this ship than, uh, than the streets down on, uh, well, whatever, whatever city we were just in. Well, that's saying something. I had to drive through a few of those to scoop your boy up here. Gesturing towards Scorcher. We should burn it. Yeah, well, I like that idea. So, uh... Well, we got a ship full of vehicles now, so... I think we can... I think we can call it even. They're all my vehicles anyways. Yeah, hey, I'm happy. We've got enough spare parts to... go around to fix up everything else that had been wrecked by your silly race. But... We've got bigger fish to fry, it sounds like. We're yeah, we should, have, uh, we should have more scrap, too, when we get back to uh, that junk planet, eh? We gotta go check on Mulgrim. Go see if the ship's flight-worthy. I think that's our first order. Right. All right. Uh, question, boss. Uh, who's gonna fly this ship now that, um, you know, the head hack is, uh, not behind the wheel? Oh, Dibs. Are we on the bridge? Can I jump into the, the big chair? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know how to fly? Do I know how to fly? No. But... You're looking at the best pilot that any of the sons have ever seen. Uh, of of ground vehicles, it's it could it'll translate. I'm sure. You just have one more axis to worry about. All right. Okay. Uh, oh. you see, uh, Zim gets like elbows you in the leg, Papa, and he goes, "What's an axis?" I think it's a door. Oh, yeah, okay. My I was thinking is... like like one of those scab things, you know, that gets all big and nasty. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that, that's an abscess. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess you would know, right? You're the doctor after all. Mm -hmm. Well, I clean a bunch of those off of me patients. <laughs> well, I'm just going to go to my own ship. In case something bad happens to people on this ship. So, yeah, good luck, would boys. anything bad happen? I don't know. He said he doesn't know how to fly or pilot. But he's he's an he's an evil son. How how hard could it be? 
You did better get us there. Back to Akrodos. Back to Akrodos. Now let's take a look here. Um, I'll start fiddling about with stuff on the bridge. Okay. Well, you know what that means. Uh, are we diving into the warp? Let's do it. I mean, you know, if we want to... What is it, four weeks of travel? Five weeks. Five weeks of travel, oof. What's the call um, here, war boss? I mean, it went well the first time. <laughs> Man checks out. That's true. It's very true. Uh, Alrighty. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, do you let Vashir read the tides of the warp? Or do you guys just yep. dive in? Yeah, we'll let him read them. Okay. It's not very fun, but whatever. Uh, all right, so a DN5 psychic mastery test here to read the tides of the warp. He easily passes that. Uh, and he has a shift, so he'll give you guys a point of glory. Nice. And then he's going to roll on the route stability table. See what the tides say. A one, a stable route, granting him plus one bonus to steering the vessel. Okay, so he chimes in. Everything looks clear, Captain, whenever you're ready. And let's start now before it turns on us. All right, so, Loctar, would you like to ward for ill tidings to get the crew prepped? Yes. Okay, give me a DN5 leadership test. Okay. I feel like we need, like, some evil music here. <laughs> Ooh, a complication. <laughs> and you also failed. Oh boy. Okay, well, I'm gonna re-roll that with a wrath point. <laughs> okay. Or, what was it for? DN5. Oh, five, gotcha. Okay, so you do pass the test, however, you've rolled a complication. Uh, so if a complication... You don't have to roll that, It's this is different. Oh, okay. Test. If a complication is rolled... The, the crew succumb to fear and paranoia. Reduce crew morale by 1d6. So we'll just count that. You rolled a four. Uh, so, fellas, please reduce the morale of both ships by four points. Oof. Uh, I know I ask this every time, but do you guys have access to the notes page for each ship? Should, yeah. Can you yeah. edit the notes? All the quick notes here. It looks like it. You say okay. four morale? Yes. So we're down to 95 out of 99. Oof. How's, on how's the, the, on the vindication. 76 out of 90. Ew. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, the crew gets prepped, but uh, there's a lot of murmurs that uh, they don't want to go back into the warp so soon. I mean, it's literally been like a day or two since you guys <laughs> got out of the warp. Uh, so most of your human crew are probably like, no thanks. Uh, but the orcs, of course, don't really care. Um, now, please roll me a D100, Loctar. You must roll equal to or under the morale of your crew. Otherwise, uh, there could be an omen. 66. I think you said you had 80 on the Vindication. Uh, Matt, what was the morale? 95. Oh, 95. Okay, so you're fine. All right. And then finally, we must test for the translation into the warp. I need all of you to please give me a DN3 resolve test. Um, you guys each get a plus one bonus because you have entered the warp before. This is to see if you're affected by any warp hallucinations. Now, would this count as being in a vehicle at top speed? <laughs> no, you're not moving yet. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right. Oh, wait, hold on. This is as the now? the rift in reality opens up and your ship begins to slip through into another dimension. Okay, here we go. I think it did that right that Ooh, time. Ooh, complication. 
Oh boy. And a failure and a failure. Oh boy. Well, we've got one point of glory if anybody wants to take that. Everybody rolled two successes. Fight over yeah. it. <laughs> uh, if you want to take it. I already used Wrath, so I'm I'm, I'm not going to roll this one. Gork wills it. Let's just see what happens. I'm not going to use the, the glory, by the way. I'm just going to see what happens. Um, what do I, it was DN3. I just need a half. Yep. I'll do... I'll do a wrath. <laughs> Nothing. No change. Oh, okay. Literally the same result. That's so upsetting. Ew. Ew. I'll use okay. up the glory then. Right. <laughs> Nobody else is going to use it. That's fair. <laughs> ah, damn. <laughs> all right. So all three of you have rolled a two. So you're each going to roll on the warp hallucinations table, which is a D100. See what horrible things affect your mind as you dive into the warp. Loctar, oh, low is better on this, I believe. Uh, so Loctar with a, I'm sorry, uh, Rex Machina. That would have been Matt. Matt with a 41, terrifying dreams. The character is plagued by horrible dreams during the voyage. You must make a DN3 resolve test. If you pass, all is well. If you fail, you gain an exhausted condition for the rest of the journey. Once you return to real space, if you take a respite, you may attempt the test again to remove the condition. So it's like a special exhausted condition that'll stick with you until you have a chance to rest and you have a chance to get rid of it. So another DN3 resolve, please. You have horrible dreams of had Hacka's ship or his vehicle exploding. You weren't able to save him in time. So I'm also plus two DN for being afraid of stuff. Fear, the fear condition from... No, you or, shouldn't no, actually... That, that is a different test. That's because I clicked fear. Gotcha. Yeah, All yeah, right. you, should, you, you didn't actually get fear from this. It's just using your, uh, your resolve. Okay, here we go. a little better. Okay, you pass. So the dreams do not affect you. Peppa rolling a 15. Phobia. The character gains a phobia at the GM's discretion for the duration of the warp journey and for D3 weeks after returning to real space. Anytime they roll a complication on any test, they believe that they see the object of their phobia. Whenever this happens, or whenever they actually encounter their phobia, they must make a DN3 resolve test. If they pass, they overcome their phobia, but if they fail, they gain a fear condition. Hmm. Well, roll me a D3, Peppa, to see how long this phobia is going to last. Okay. Super slash. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll take suggestions from the other players, too, if you guys can think of anything. Otherwise, I'll give him something. To, uh, one was that a D three? So yeah. two weeks. All right. If not, I'll come up with something for you, Sean. And nobody. No. All right. No. Nope. <laughs> All right then. We'll we'll get to that in a minute. Lock Tar with a ninety three. Oh boy, that is. One step away from the worst one. Oh, no. Overwhelming despair. The character is overcome by the utter despair of their situation. At the end of any warp encounters during this voyage, the character must make a DN3 conviction test. If passed, all is well. If failed, they gain a hindered condition for the rest of the journey. Once they return to real space, after any respite they take, they may attempt the test again to remove the condition. Oh no, the war boss has slipped into a soul-crushing depression. <laughs> the warp does strange things to your small little orc minds. Apparently. Uh, let's see, Sean, what should we do for your... Do we get any bonuses for not, or for like having a Geller field? 
Uh, some of these, the effects are different or lessened if you have a Geller field, but that's usually when there's actual demonic entities trying oh, okay. to get into your ship. <laughs> um, the, but I said the Geller field acts as like a physical barrier, oh, in, in parentheses, a physical barrier to stuff actually trying to manifest on your ship. Gotcha. But the whispers of the warp are still strong. Oh, here, let's uh, see if Google can give us a good random phobia. <laughs> Fear of Germans? <laughs> what? Please let it be that one. Uh, and then just have the next guardsman we be just be Germans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here, I can make it give me multiple ones. Boom. All right. Roll a d10, Sean. Sure, sure. It's a fun. Seven? One. One. Okay, one. Chronophobia. Fear of time moving forward. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, so oh, he's just my. in a constant state of fear? Um, yeah, more or less. Uh... That's, that's gonna be a rough journey, man. All right, I'm just gonna <laughs> click the fear button now, and uh, you know when we fucking pass a week, Chris, in two sessions, let me know. Not if we go back in time during our trip. Oh, there you okay. go. Just go. We gotta, we gotta go, beat the warp. Yeah, go so fast for the warp, you end up there before you left. Yeah, and then I can kill the version of me that suffers from this paranoia. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't you take the DN three resolve test right now? If you pass, we'll say you're good for the journey. If you fail, you're you're bad for the journey. I won't make a test every day because that'll just take too long. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's why it gave me fear when I did the initial resolve test. Maybe if your guy was, you know, constantly wearing like a watch, it'd be different, but. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> Ew. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you um, you have a fear condition nice. for a while. Okay, now Vashir needs to locate the Astronomicon with a DN5 awareness test. Can he see the light of the Emperor? With a critical, he does. Gets you guys another point of glory, because he's a boss like that. And so he'll have another plus one bonus to charting the course. Okay. Uh, DN5 scholar test as he plans the course back to Akrodos, basically the way you came, I would imagine. Uh, oh man, he crushes that too. He's going to give you guys another point of glory, because he doesn't need that. And now he will steer the vessel with a piloting test. DN5, but he's got a bonus from charting the course. And he's also got a bonus from a stable warp route. Two bonus dice. I think this should be pretty easy for him. Another critical. Damn, bro. I'm glad it's not against us, but chill. Uh, and he's got five successes, so he does pass. Okay, so if passed and if a favorable course was charted, which it was, reduce the duration of the journey by a quarter, and the navigator rolls once on the warp encounters table, subtracting 10 from the roll. Um, in addition, you get a plus one bonus when you exit the warp. Okay, so you always are going to have at least one warp encounter. That's There's no way around that, but this is the best it can be. Someone roll me a D100 minus 10. Obviously, lower is better. Hey. Oh, Loctar, great roll, 30 down to 20. All's well. No encounter takes place. And there's a bonus here. Any character suffering from a warp hallucination may attempt to remove the effects by making an immediate DN3 resolve test. So it's all of us? Yep. Nice. Peppa, here's your chance to not be scared for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> we don't get any bonus dice, right? No. Okay. Uh, and should I be under the effects of the fear? So 
plus two DN for this? Um, no, no, I don't think you would. Okay. <gasps> double sixes, double sixes <laughs> and a critical up to four glory already, and you snap out of it, Peppa. You're no longer afraid of the future. You boss. look forward to it, as a thank, matter of fact. Thank you so much, boss. <laughs> uh, Eric and Matt, did you guys have any hallucinations that were ongoing? Um, oh, yeah, Eric, you've got the overwhelming yeah. despair. You probably want to roll to see if you overcome that. Two successes. Would you like to use a glory? We've got plenty. Yes. And then, Matt, you've got the terrifying dreams if you want to take your test. I think I it. Pass the second. Uh, uh, ooh, that's a fail. So I'll burn my last. Oh, can I use my wrath now, or do I get a... Should I have used that first? Um, it's, wrath, use wrath? it's wrath first, then glory. Okay. All right. Okay. I I will remain in my despair. All right, so... Um, okay, well, at the end of the journey, you have to test to see if the despair actually affects you. Basically, you're just depressed the whole journey, and then when you guys get out of the warp, there's a chance you snap out of it. So, uh, however, the journey is uneventful for the rest of the crew, for the most part. You guys easily making it through the warp. And finally, we need to see if he can get you guys out of the warp with a DN5 survival test. And he's got a plus one bonus. Rolling 12 dice, I don't think this will be a problem for him, but you never know. Hey, shh! Complication. Okay, so if passed, the vessel emerges from the warp on target, returning an open, empty real space. The journey has come to an end. However, if a complication is rolled, the vessel enters real space dangerously close to a stellar object, such as an asteroid, debris field, space anomaly, another vessel, or even a planet. The helmsman, looking at you, evil son, must immediately make a DN7 pilot test. So, you guys feel the ship rumble as uh, the warp opens up and your ship begins to translate back into real space, kind of emerging from the murky depths that the ship is submerged in. Well, ships, I should say. However, the second you guys begin to make your way to the other side of the rift, warning klaxons and sirens light up the bridges and the hallways of both vessels, and the warning systems echoing collision imminent collision imminent so uh i'll need both pilots so sean if you're not piloting that will just be the the skill of your crew it is yes. a dn7 pilot test to avoid damage to your ship and i suppose we can imagine since you're going back to akrados uh with all the junk around the planet it makes sense that there's something out here you guys are about to crash into. Perhaps the wreckage of another ship or some such. Oh boy. <laughs> big, big piece of scrap floating in space. Now does coming out of warp travel count as being in a vehicle at top speed? Yes. Yes. I, I think I would let you do that. Okay. Peppa spending a raft gets eight successes. You got two shifts there. Ooh, and a critical from Steel Ripper. With nine successes. Um, Sean, you can shift one more if you want to max out your guys' glory pool. Um, no, because it's DN7, right? I forgot to... Oh, yeah, you're uh, right. You're DN, right. yeah, yeah. That's fine. Bad. Okay. Uh, however, a critical... Okay, so... If passed, the vessel avoids the hazard and is undamaged. So both of you manage to avoid crashing into anything and for uh steel ripper if a critical is rolled the crew is so impressed with the helmsman maneuvers that they gain d3 morale yeah all right so that'll just be for the vindication but that'll help take off some of what you lost when you entered the warp nice 
All right, so one morale back. It's better than nothing. And finally, now that we are out of the warp, Eric, I'll need your DN3 conviction test for your overwhelming despair. And... Yep, that's it. Two successes. Oh, no, three with the six. Well done. Oof, okay. That's close. All right. So when you uh, see the deft maneuvers that your new boy pulls off, you realize that you have found a decent replacement for Head Hacka, and that raises your spirits as you do not crash and burn as you re-enter real space. Uh, and it took a quarter of the time, so you're a little bit uh, ahead of schedule here. It was five weeks. Just over a week to get back. You guys make some excellent, excellent time. Put you back over here. Get rid of that as you rejoin the fleet. Okay. So you find yourselves back in orbit above Akrados, wadding through the garbage that surrounds the planet. What would you like to do? Good fly and steel ripper. The told you it'd work easy as pie. All right, let's find Mulgrim. Do we see our ship yet, or? Uh, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't see it. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to see it with the naked eye unless you like landed right on top of it. Yeah, let's find Mulgrim. See where he's at. Can we scan for Mulgrim or for our ship? You certainly could. Yep. See. Give me, uh, what is it? Investigation plus detection, I believe. Yeah, let me, let me see the ship stats. Yep, investigation plus uh, detection. Okay. It's only a plus one, but we'll do our best. Wow. Okay. Seven success. Two shifts, so I'll shift once for, uh, quality and then once for glory okay um if i was gonna say if you shift for glory there you go perfect yeah. okay so you quickly do a scan and it is not long before you do indeed find uh the rex machina and it is it is in the atmosphere of the planet it doesn't look like it's landed uh but it is floating there in the you know, the upper atmosphere of the planet still seems operational. So I'll just. All right. Bring us in closer. Let's uh, hail Mulgrim, see if we can get an update. Yeah, now your two ships can't actually go planet side, but you can get closer to the planet and then. Yeah, just uh, close enough to like hail them or communicate. Yeah, call them up on the Vox. Okay. Alrighty, I think I'm going to need a... What is it? It's a DN3 tech test to hail another ship. Sure, I can try that out. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's well, a damn. lot of sixes. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, you easily uh, lock in on their signal punch in a couple codes, send down a, a hail with uh, whatever call sign you guys have been using so he knows that it's you. And eventually there's a, a crackle as you seem to make connection down to the, the Machina. Oi, who's this? Lockdar. Oh, How goes boss? progress? You're back. That was fast. The, the warp... We sailed well through the warp this time. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, yeah, things is going okay down here. Um, well, actually, no, not really. Uh, hmm. where to begin? Well, um, there's, uh, there's all sorts of nasty things down here on the planet. Days making it real hard to get some proper looting going on. Half the boys, 
Thing things. Warp things. Half the boys are too scared to get out of the ship and go down there. And the other ones I send down don't come back. Or they come back with just bits and bobs. We gotten some stuff, but yeah, we could get a lot more if we could get a landing zone cleared. Okay. In game terms, um, they've scrounged up about eight scrap so far. Uh, but if you guys can do something, they can double that. What's our um, current scrap at? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> a thousand. Uh, it is currently six. Okay. Plus the eight or. It would be plus the eight. Okay. So you're, you're at six before anything. Gotcha. Um, also, uh, some visitors stopped by. Yeah, we, uh, we had some visitors. Uh, so, and not long after you guys left, um, we was starting to, to figure out what we was going to do here, do some repairs, and, uh, well, something else came out of the warp. I figured it wasn't you, so I hid the ship down here. There's no way we's gonna fight while banged up the way we was, so... Something was scanning. I don't think they saw us. If they did, they left. So... I don't know what's out there, but I didn't want to risk your big ship, of course. How's the ship faring? Well, well that, uh, that uh, is good news. So we got most of the repairs fixed. Uh, the only real problem is that uh, weapon system that got fried. Uh, that's that's got to be completely replaced. Uh, I might be able to do it with stuff down here, but uh, the rest of the ship is more or less put together. Uh, still a little banged up here and there, but uh, you know, all the all the weapons are back online, and we fixed the thrusters too. Great. All right. Well. We brought you some gifts. We got some trucks and flyers ready to be fitted out from the from the last raid. The oh, hole, nice. So, if, if you need a landing zone, let's make a landing zone. Yeah, all right. You heard him, boys. We're going back to war. The boss is back. <laughs> He says, yeah, send down what you can. I'll put the coordinates up to you. Lots of big chunks of scrap down there we could use. Oh, and one other thing. I, uh, I got the first of the Storm Boys ready to go. Excellent. Let's put them to use. So we can mark off that the Storm Boys are no longer actually a project. They are completed. I'll give you access, if I haven't already, to the Storm Boy character sheet in your tribe, which I have not yet, so... Enjoy, fellas! Storm Boys are on the menu with this fucking awesome art I found. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh, very cool. Shooting the Eldar in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he probably joke. deserved it. They always do. Looks like a guardian of some sort. And the one in the background exploding. <laughs> um, so I will remind you guys, all of your troops have at least one or two talents that give them something unique on top of their war gear and stats. So keep that in mind as you bring boys to fights. Uh, they all have something a little different and uh, goofy that they can do. So they are officially part of the crew. Uh, so that's nice. And then, Eric, we need to roll for the uh, the tribe growth here really quick. Um, which should be pretty impressive now because your influence, I think, is getting up there. So you're going to roll a D100. Uh, we'll do two D100 because we'll round up to basically two weeks. 
uh, for oh, I'm sorry, a D100 for every full thousand orcs. So we have five thousand orcs. So that's going to be five D100 every week. So ten D100 times your influence. Now we're getting the juicy numbers. Ten D100 first. Yep. That's a lot of dice. That's it. Okay. Three ninety one. Ooh, that's that's great. Uh, what's your influence? Three. Another eleven hundred and seventy three orcs joining the fight, bringing you up to six thousand six hundred forty two orcs. Nicely done. Good thing we have to keep stealing ships. That's right. Okay. Well, uh, so um, do you guys have access to the Rex Machina in your fleet holder? Um, where is yeah. that? Yes. Okay. So you can see under notes, the only weapon that is still damaged is the one that was destroyed during that fight. Mm -hmm. And then um, they've repaired the hull a little bit. Uh, but the crew and the morale are still pretty heavily damaged. Uh, Mulgrim's tried to get the boys together, but he's not really a leader, so they haven't listened to him much, and he decided to say, fuck it, I got other important things to worry about, so that's on you to fix. Typical boss. <laughs> hey, man, he finished your storm, boys. He's been looting scrap. He fixed your ship, all right? He's a machines person, not a people's person. Okay, yeah, that's bad. That's and right. he hasn't even betrayed us or anything. Yeah. I was skeptical, but you know, I was, Peppa was wrong. Oh, did you hear that, Grot? Now that they've got their trust, I can turn on them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I said the loud part quiet and the quiet part loud. So, what is next on the menu here? Oh, well. Uh, going down, boss? Yeah, going down. Let's, uh, let me know when he shoots over the coordinates. Let's uh, get the boys ready. Yeah, he would send them up. You guys have them. All right. Yeah, uh, let's load up the, the ships, get the new flyers, and attach a truck to each one of them. Okay. All right, so we're doing like a full fucking combat drop here. I like it. He said he was having trouble. We're going to... We're going to clear out the trouble. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to halo drop in and then just start, you know, clearing combat zones. I think so. <laughs> going to be Modern Warfare 2 down there. Minus all the hateful lobby talk. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> we're just going to go in fighting. Okay. Uh, Is it any... like an active, like fight right now or no it's um it's more like any time that they try to land they eventually get attacked so he needs you guys to get down there secure a place so they can have uninterrupted scrapping rights okay i gotcha uh you may bring down uh some orcs to join obviously you know your your boys will be doing some stuff but for what you guys specifically are doing uh, you can um, you can bring some orcs along as well. So, if you uh, if you guys want to bring a uh, a half squad of five, you may do so. I guess you can each bring two orcs. We'll say it. We'll do it that way. Um, when he gives us the coordinates for the landing spot, can we like scan that area? Sure. Give me another uh, test to do that, please. Okay. Ooh, a critical, huh? Okay. With a shift. So I'll shift for uh, quality. Okay. And uh, what specifically are you trying to find, if anything? Um, well, he said that they're they're having trouble landing, so maybe, like, gun emplacements? Or, you know, other communication towers or anything, something like that? Trying okay. to you know, get a vague idea of why they can't land. So when you scan this place, it is like looking at a planet-wide city dump. 
it is just mounds and mounds and mountains of garbage, scrap, and refuse. Um, you do not see any full operational structures of any sort. Uh, you do occasionally see some scrap that looks like it might be a container or maybe even part of like an Imperial hab block that's been tossed away. But you do not see anything that looks like uh, like what you're looking for. Rip. Okay. Hey, folks. Couldn't see anything weird down there with the scanners. So. I guess we're good. Matter of fact, you don't even pick up any, like, signs of life uh, when you scan. On a weird? Well, keep your eyes open. Go yeah, ready for open. a fight. Yep. I can start stapling the boys' eyes open. Lickety split. <laughs> Say what? I said keep the eyes open. Don't worry about it. Hmm. You're first. Roger, boss. It's a new enhancement. <laughs> just have to, you know, get some little eyedroppers that just automatically put eye drops in my eyes. <laughs> like uh, Clockwork Orange. <laughs> Make him watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. Let's get a grot to do that. Then I gotta spend XP on a grot. No, that's worth it. All right. So, uh, what orcs would you guys like to take with you? I mean, we just got the storm boys, right? Should we try them out? Just, just take six storm boys and be done with it. Yeah. I want to jump down with some storm boys. I, I yeah. like snaked that grab pack from one of those guys, right? So I could. You do, oh, yeah. Ooh, you, you yeah. actually can drop down with them. Yes. That's super cool. Yeah. yeah, so did I. So, oh, oh, look at these badasses. Okay. <laughs> well, Peppa did not. Peppa failed his requisition check all the time. So, well, Peppa's gonna have to just ride in the dropship like a plebe orc, but that's yeah. fine. A sad, lonely orc all by yeah. himself. <clears throat> so, you guys load up the mo the Mad Boy module, uh, the Vendettas, the Valkyries, and you know whatever. Uh, Valkyries you took that are the, the carry-alls and orcs start loading up in some of the looted vehicles that you have. Um, some of the vehicles they can't load up into because they don't have, they're not, you know, they're open tops. They can't ride them in space. They gotta wait till you guys land. Uh, but I think you guys did snag a chimera. I think you guys managed to snag one. But anyway, you load up into all these vehicles and... The sky begins to uh, darken with the shapes of stolen Imperial vehicles, uh, all of which have some sort of uh, orc graffiti or paraphernalia on them. Uh, some of them with glyphs and random scrap metal that have already been bolted on. It's impressive how much customization your boys have gotten done in just under two weeks. And uh, it is leaves no uh, no sense of the imagination that it is orcs coming down to the planet. And as you guys land, um, the area that you are uh, that you're landing in again is just mountains and mountains of garbage. Uh, in many places, you can't even see the ground of the planet. Now, you do all have to wear suits because this planet does have a corrosive atmosphere, so you can't stay down here indefinitely as it'll start to eat through your suit, but you've got time to get down there and do some stuff before it becomes a problem. It's a slow process, so you can be down there for a little while. And as you guys begin to make planet fall, uh, it is not long before strange lights and weird shapes begin to bubble in the very fabric of reality. And moments later, you can see the telltale signs of disturbances in the warp. Uh, but this time, rather than entering or leaving the warp aboard your ship, you see entities and figures emerging from the other side. 
And that is where we are going to start this fight. All right. So here's what we're going to do since most of you are dropping in. We're going to roll scattering rules to see where you land. And then we shall start. We'll scatter off this center. Looks like I said, looks kind of like a building, maybe a old hab block or a container. Uh, all ruined and messed up. But let's put you guys on the, the board here. And your storm boys as well. Make sure they're not linked. Okay, good. All right, each of you take two of these. Okay. Peppa, since you're in a drop ship and not actually jumping out, Unless you want to get a jump pack, I mean, there's probably plenty to go around at this point. No, no, I think he wouldn't have thought of grabbing a jump pack. He would just sit in the, <laughs> in the, okay. the flyer, kind of like, oh, well, that's okay. Okay, all right, so you'll show up on the second turn then, because they're all jumping out of the the back of the ship as you're as you're landing. Right. So you've got to you've got to wait as you see them spiraling out. Uh, so each of you roll me a d6, and let me get the scattering chart from the rulebook here. And uh, we'll scatter off the center building, like I said, to see where you start off. Okay, so Sean, your boys land over here. Okay. Off to the uh, the right. Steel Ripper, uh, yours, and, and, uh, and you land off to the left here. Put you over here. And then, Eric, you rolled a four. You're to the north. Okay. Peppa, you can show up next turn since you're in the drop ship. I'll let you choose which side of the board you come in on. Okay. Because uh, obviously you can direct that. And if everybody would please add yourselves to the initiative, we'll add one thing for the Storm Boys. Actually, no, you guys just, the Storm Boys go on your turn. So they don't even need their own initiative. And then we will reveal your enemies. So as you guys get closer and you land and you see these creatures emerging from the warp, they appear to look somewhat like a humanoid creature standing on two legs with two arms. But you can see that they are bloated with distended bellies, elongated limbs flesh the color of decay and death some of them a sickly green others a pale putrid white all of them have a single eye in the center of their head and above that eye a single long horn swarming around them you can see clouds thick clouds of flies and other insects they appear diseased, injured, and plague-ridden. And you get your first glimpse of demons of the warp. I think that is all of them, yes. Okay. Papa Nurgle is here to party. Uh, any questions before we begin? Well, we're all green, can't we just get along? <laughs> Uh, Have we encountered demons before in good. our travels? No. Okay. Maybe not other than the occasional thing in the warp, but nothing like this. And it is a truly nerve-wracking experience. It is... Um, you guys can tell just as you get closer that they are um, not like anything that uh, you've ever seen before. It's a bizarre bizarre feeling. Let me add them to the initiative track here. Wow, Plague Bear's going first. That's when you know it's been a bad day. Yep. Okay, let's do this. Yeah. The first thing I need, these are demons, and they are frightful, terrifying creatures. They cause fear. I need all of you to make a DN3 fear test. Do this for your boys as well. I would say to make things fast, make one test for both of your storm boys. All right, these are the storm boys. Okay, 
So Loctar with a critical, you pass your fear test. Double sixes. Steel Ripa quaking in his boots. Epistorm boys failed. Okay. Oh, the GM Kane's corruption when you guys fail. Wrath tests or fear tests. Huh. You corruption or ruin or what? It says you get a corrupt you get a ruin when you fail a corruption or a fear test. Oh boy. <laughs> that's why my that's why my ruin's going up here. Oh boy. Okay. Uh who storm boys storm... pass there? That was mine. Oh look at that. Yeah. Eric leading the charge. Your boys are hooting and hollering. They love it. Literally no fear. <laughs> oh wait. Were they your yeah, steel rippers? I don't know. I guess I they it happened at the same time. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I think it makes sense. The war boss is leading, yeah, well. and they are excited. So, so we have uh, Sean Stormboys have failed, as have Steel Rippers, and Steel Rip himself has failed. So, be sure you give them the fear condition on their uh, character sheet because they're all individuals for those that failed. And in case you missed them, I just want to point out where the plague bearers are so you can see them. You know they kind of blend into the map a little bit here. Okay, at initiative four. The Plague Bearers somehow going first. <laughs> they don't move fast. They seem to almost shamble in your direction and just kind of stomping through the piles of scrap and garbage. They don't seem to be in any particular rush. They move five. What's going on with this guy? Well, somehow the plague bear got a fear condition. What? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. The green tide, brother. Brother, it comes for you. Uh, let's roll for this one. On a one, two, or three, he's gonna go for Steel Ripper. Four, five, six, he's gonna go for Sean Storm Boys. He's walking towards a Steel Ripper. Loctar, one of these cr creatures, shambles towards one of your Storm Boys who just landed. You see that they are carrying these wicked hunks of metal that you would call a sword if they weren't so rusted and dripping with some fi uh, vile, plague-ridden concoction. And he takes a swing with his plague sword. And that is a hit, despite the Storm Boys having a decent three defense. Damn. He's going to take 12 damage and he is poisoned. And uh, which one is this? This one right here. Oh, it's okay. Eric's. Um, so 12 damage minus resilience. Yes. Ouch. Yeah. Um, and they can use determination to eat some of that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're counting them as agents, not just troops. Oh, look at that roll. Five. Nice. Yeah. Okay, but then I take all all of my shock, right? Yes, yeah, so you, you only soak four, because he only has four <laughs> shock. And so now he's exhausted, and then whatever the difference is. Okay. All right. So he's going to take one wound. Yeah. Yeah, so he's exhausted uh, and takes a wound. And he has poison four. Um... So the number on the poison test is the DN of the toughness test you need to pass in order to recover. So these guys are nasty. That is a DN7 test you have to pass. And do I take that right now, or...? Uh, that is just what I was about to check. So while you're poisoned, you get plus two DN to all tests. The poison condition ends when you are treated with the Medicaid skill or you succeed on a toughness test at the beginning of your turn. So I suppose you can take the toughness test just naturally. I won't count that as an action. That's just your body trying to resist. So yeah, they can test at the beginning of their turn. Okay, Peppa, your storm boy. No. Also getting shivved by a rusty sword. Ooh. Oh, you can apply poison seven. 13 damage, and he's poisoned. Well, let's take Oops. a look at this. I meant to put the poison on this guy. I guess I'll put on the plague bear. 
Yeah, so uh, I guess we will uh, try to do a shock. One, two, three. Um, so 13 minus 7 is 6, down to 3. Okay. And then he needs to take a DN7 toughness test. Start of his turn. Okay. Yeah, and uh, all at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can I apply the poison condition to him? I think it did. Okay. All right. Steel Ripper, unfortunately, you are the only one that is in range that he could reach. So he is attacking you. And he is going to... Well, there's a lot of successes there. Let me do that. Actually, I should ask, what is your DN? Because I didn't have you targeted. Uh, defense is just two. Okay. 12 damage. And you are poisoned. All righty. But hey, you got that toughness boost, right? So you'll be fine. Yeah, sure. yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so go. not that great. Uh, that brings that down. I guess that's e even. Wait, did you say 12 damage? Yes. And so resilience nine, that's three. I absorb three with shock. So You're no rigor ones, but I do take poison. Poison oh, actually, one. let's make sure. Does the poison oh. affect you? Oh, it's already on there. Let's see how inflict works. If it deals a wound, it didn't deal a wound, so you are not poisoned. Awesome. So you can get rid of that. Okay, Peppa, you are up next at initiative three. Uh, uh, so I'm not there, right? Correct. Um, but you, my boys. Yeah, your boys can go, and then next turn you can show up yeah all right so uh the boy over here is going to attack the uh plague bearer that is gutting him um but he's he's <laughs> okay. also feared right yeah they have fear yeah hell yeah be great love it uh so what are they good at they're good at punching things let's do that okay um, let's see. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> All right, that's great. It's DN6 now. Amazing. Oh, sorry, I'm pressing a bunch of buttons on his character sheet. Let's see how this works. Oh, boy. This is just straight from the rule book. Oh, he's got a lot of dice, though. Look at that. Miss. Only four successes. Mm. You know what? Risk. We have six glory. Let's, let's fucking throw one at it and hope for a six. Fish for the six? No. Nope. nope. It's a two. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, now he has a pistol. What does that do in close combat? Uh, you can fire pistols in close combat because they have the pistol. Uh, yeah, pistols can be fired while engaged. Okay. Am I able to, like... Do, 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 does he do two attacks, or I have to choose between the chop or the, the If you If you did multi-attack, I suppose you could... It would be like two-weapon fighting, basically. Gotcha. Um, you could do that, but... Uh, that increases the DN of all your attacks by two. Mm -hmm. um, is this Stormboy engaged? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. He should have been attacked. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Super cool. Yep. Super cool. 12 damage, and he's poisoned. Yay. <laughs> all right. Fear. Apply poison. Nice. Um, determination. Okay, that's four. Okay, and... so he takes uh, one wound and is now exhausted. All, All right. right. <sighs> I guess he'll attack that, that guy then. <laughs> attack him, so. All right, boys. We can do this. Uh... Is there a benefit to using the pistol over the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll try the pistol. See if we can do that. Slug's got more base damage. Yeah, but the Choppa has three ED. You know, we, we'll, we'll try the, the Slug. We'll give it a shot. Point blank shot? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's rolling less dice. <laughs> is okay. there any is there any bonus for being uh, close with shooting? Uh, I don't know. Well, you're normally it just it. Yeah, but it normally just automatically adds it in. Oh well. 
I think the so. pistol is weird. When you're engaged, it's like plus two DN, and you don't get bonus for sh short range because you know I'll, you're like busy in combat. I'm just gonna go with the chopper. That's safe. <laughs> safe. All right, let's give it a shot, boys. Oh, oh, Just so close. It, oh, it's, it's reliable. <laughs> it is reliable. Yep. Okay, you got five out of six. You want to burn another glory? Yeah, yeah, I guess. We just need a four, five, or six. Hey, oh, we hit. Look at nice. that. How All right. How much damage is that going to be? Um, It says seven damage, plus I will have four ED. Okay. So. One, two, three. Ten damage. Okay. That does do a wound to him. <laughs> oh no, just a wound. That resilience nine. Yikes. Well, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Nice. All right. Next up is Steel Ripper and his feared storm boys. Alrighty. Well, I am guess I'm going to try to shoot into combat anyway at a significant uh, sort of disadvantage. But it is a good gun, so maybe it'll work out anyway. Oh, um, yeah, you got your super death pistol, right? Yeah. Uh, is this everything? Plus two... Oh, and that's two more? Ugh. <laughs> Alright. Well, there you go. Mm, that's not great. Yeah, one success. Oh, uh, I think I'm gonna throw a wrath at that one. Okay. <gasps> Burning through that meta currency. That's a lot better. There you go, six. Six. Why does it say DN7, though? Oh, wait, what's their defense? Their base defense is three. Oh, wait. They have an ability. Cloud of flies. Oh, my God. Surrounded by a supernatural cloud of filth, black, and flies, obscuring it from view and threatening to choke anyone that gets close. The Plague Bearer counts as being in full cover at all times. Chris. That would be my guess. All right. Uh, I'm going to throw a glory at it. I believe in you. Nope. Ah. <laughs> Criminy. Okay, how about your storm boys? They can help. Uh, yeah, they're gonna come in and do some hits. Right. Uh, I guess with choppas because of cover. All right, and you can have a plus one um, bonus for outnumbering for each guy. So one Sorry. can have plus one, one can have plus two. All righty. We're doing choppa. They're also afraid. We'll get a plus one there. Um, wait, how does Wah work? One to all attacks. And if you're wounded, you get an extra one. So they're not wounded yet. And that's just DN5, because the cover doesn't matter in melee. I, I guess know. not. All right, we'll just roll the damage then. Uh, which is nine. Okay, he'll take... Oh, they don't have shocks. They're demons. All right. Okay. This guy is also doing one. Get a chop in. Oh, my goodness. Look, one success on... Whips. Up to 11 dice? What? what the fuck? Wow, they are one, scared three, one, as shit. Three, 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 yeah. three, Damn. one, one. Jesus. All right, Loctar, show them how it's done. Your boys are struggling. All right, uh, do I gotta run the toughness test first? Yes. Yeah, you guys should do that too, by the way, for your orcs that are poisoned. <laughs> no. So does he take a uh, wound, or how does that work? No, he's just he just keeps the poison condition, so his DN for his tests are higher. Oh, okay. Sean, you can roll for yours too, because they got poisoned before their turn. So, gotcha. Um, just one roll for each of them, right? Just a yes. toughness check. Yep, DN seven. 
Oh, this will go smashingly. <laughs> okay, there's a bunch of additional DNs. Plus two to all tests, plus two DN to all tests, plus DN to all tests, plus one. Test. So base should be seven. And so now it's a DN 10 test. Okay. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, Wounded, feared. Yeah. With a six on each dice, I can get eight. <laughs> I got one. Yay. <laughs> oh, man. I guess that's why these guys are uh, elites. Yeah. Not adversaries. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm okay. thinking I need to keep upgrading the boys here with some more cyber tech. Probably. Eric, go ahead. He's probably not going to pass those tests if you just want to do your turn. Okay, so it should be DN5 for poisoned. Yeah, and then if he's wounded, which he is, so it'd be DN6. Six, okay. A lot to keep track of here. Whoa. Yeah, it didn't First get him wounded for some reason. Damn. Critical. Boy. Damn, look at that. Really That's showing us how to do it. Yeah, fucking shift that stuff. Oh, damn, I didn't shift it. Uh, you can shift it, go ahead. Shift. Yeah, I'm gonna shift two of them for damage. So is it just uh, two more damage or two more dice for damage? More dice. Okay. Was that the dice plus the ED? Yeah. Well, you already rolled the ED, so you can keep those rolls. Okay. So two, three, four. So an additional five damage. So, or is that already counted? I think that was already counted. So I think. Okay, so it's twelve. Twelve. Okay, and a critical. What you got? Merciless strike. A blow to the foe's body steals the breath from their lungs, pulverizing their innards with a nasty crunch. Target suffers a mortal wound, plus one mortal wound for every glory. Okay. Uh, so I'll add two glory. Nice. All right. Okay, that is a good hit that staggers this thing. And uh, you can see as he strikes it with his chopper, uh, leaves a huge gash in this thing's extended gut. You see maggots and innards disgustingly smelling pouring out of the wound. It looks down with sort of a confused but uh, ghoulish smile on its face. It runs its finger through its guts, and then it sticks its finger in its mouth and takes a big, like, lick off of it. Ah, uh, Chris, you really love Nurgle, huh? <sighs> the best. Okay. How, how far do I need to be to do a charge move? Uh, I know it's more than one square away, that, that's for sure. Okay. All right. So. Uh, you, mean you, you could jump to somewhere else because you do have the jump pack, too. So that's fine. My second storm boy is going to use right. his choppa on the same. OK, and remember, you get plus one now because he's oh. numbered. Oh, it's a complication. Yeah, roll an extra die. Oh, probably doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Two, four, five, six. Yeah, you hit. OK, roll your damage. Roll complication. Ten damage. OK. And he drops his weapon. That's not good in a junkyard. Okay, that Plague Bearer is looking pretty hurt. However, as he hits this thing in the shoulder, it reels back and swats out with its sword. The Stormbite ducks away, but he has to let go of his, uh, his weapon. The thing falls out of the Plague Bearer's shoulder and disappears somewhere in the mountain of trash. Loctar, you're up. All right, he's gonna go in and try and finish them off, I guess. All right, give yourself plus two for outnumbering. Okay, looks like you hit. Oh, that's right, you got boss killer. Boss killer. You're gonna need it. Oh. Ew. Ooh, that's gross. Well, it's brutal, right? So it still gets some extra damage. Yeah, brutal. Brewer's on three plus, right? I think so. Uh, no, yeah, so three and four inflict one damage, five and six inflict two damage. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so it, it added that correctly. Okay, uh, 13 damage. The AP doesn't matter, obviously. They're demons. They don't have armor. But 13 damage 
Loctar the war boss gets the killing blow, sending the plague bearer back to the depths of the warp. In a disgusting smelling puff of demonic smoke, it fades away as its essence is dragged back into the other realm. Your two boys give off a cheer like they're having the best day of their life. And I think that's a good spot to take our break. We're at our halfway point, so we'll be right back. Go grab your Dr. Pepper and your Nurgle, uh, your Nurgle foam fingers, and we'll be right back. Okay. Ready. BRB boys. All right, listeners, we are back for round two. Plague Bears are up first at... Actually, uh, Peppa... Oh, you've already got initiative. I was going to say roll your initiative. Okay, well, the Plague Bears shall go. I'm going to roll D3 over here for you, Matt, to see if uh, he attacks you or the others. You'll be a three or four. A six, he's going for the Storm Boy to the north. Taking a swing with his vile plague sword, he gets a critical hit. Oh shit! shit. That orc. Oh, I forgot he can shift. Oh, oh god! Does he want shifts? to? Oh yes, he does. Thirteen damage. Oops. Oh my god! Why is it doing that? Here we go. And. 66 grisly amputation the foe's limb is removed with extreme prejudice leaving their body in a crimson arc they suffer one mortal wound and one limb is destroyed oh boy well i've got so much ruin i'm gonna spend two ruin to make that a total of three mortal wounds on that guy so 16 i guess yes well, let's see what determination says. All right, so that's three of those. Uh, out of the normal thirteen, down to ten, down to three. From resilience, and then three mortal ruins. So he's exactly dead. Dang it! Ooh, perfect. He had one choice. more. Would have got him. Oh. Uh... Goodbye, Storm Boy. You served us well. Okay, Sean, your Storm Boys in a duel for their very lives. I don't know if it's a duel, Chris. Critical. Oh, <laughs> it's not all the fuck on, okay? This is so much fun. I'm having a really good time, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it in your voice. I know. 13 damage. Apply this poison that he never escaped. Yep. Oh, wait, no, that applied it to Peppa. Wow. And... Overpowering assault, a stunning blow sends the foe lurching away, senses blurred by the brutal impact. They suffer two shock and are staggered. Was it well, that I'll tell you what, I'm going to put another point of root on there to make that four shock. Cool, cool, cool. This one. Okay, so he's out of shock, so you're just giving him four mortal wounds. Out <laughs> <laughs> of a dick move, Chris, but uh, hey, live life. Grandfather uh, Nurgle is pleased. And then he takes 13 damage minus his resilience of 7, which is 6. <laughs> he just did 10 wounds to him. Let me put, you know, 11 out of 6 there. See if that changes anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. Killed him. Goodbye. Souls for the tally, man. All right. Next plague bearer. Look at, look at this storm, boys. <laughs> All of the fucking statuses on him. <laughs> Fear, poison, wounded, poisoned again. <laughs> oh, I saw the six a couple times. Complication this time. Okay. Yeah. Good. We are doing 13 he's... damage. Uh, yeah. I think he's dead. Uh, out of ammo. We gotta reroll that. Out of ammo again. Come on, game. Restrained. Okay. So as he cuts down the storm boy, his foot gets stuck in some heap of garbage. And you can see him struggling to get out. He's trapped by the ankle, but that storm boy is down. 
And that is... Oh, this Plague Bearer is going to continue to shamble over towards you guys. And then you can hear a large rumbling from the center structure container thing. You see it shake, and garbage around it begins to fall uh, loose in little uh, drops and dust particles. Peppa, where would you like to enter the fight? Uh, over here by Loctar and his boys. <laughs> Not where your guys just got murdered? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> yeah. All right, just count your movement from the edge of the, the map. Okay, one. Um, can I see this guy? Uh, yeah, probably. Just Four. just barely as he's going around the, the edge of this, uh, this pile of garbage right here. All right, let's uh, take out Mountain Thunder. Wanna... <laughs> See if we can hear the boom. Oh, a complication. complication, but that is a that is a big hit. With three shifts, we oh, will yeah. shift. Get, get, get. Get, get, indeed. 22 <laughs> minus one AP. No, they don't have armor. <clears throat> 22 damage. A complication. Um, what is this? Dropped weapon. Uh, yeah, there's no point. I think it's going to kill him outright. Oh, it certainly does. Peppa arrives like the Rambo savior you needed, hoisting his big shooter. Or I'm sorry, bolt, heavy bolta. You just tear this thing apart, shells ripping into it, its disgusting body bursting in uh, gore and smelly buboes. You see maggots go flying everywhere and the cloud of flies disperses with a puff of smoke. Nice. And then Peppa, like he's in some kind of Looney Tunes, drops his weapon as he shoots it, so I'll have to pick it up next turn. Yeah, you're just so excited. Steel Ripper, you hear... Well, actually, you're probably not too familiar with uh, Peppa's gun at this point, but uh, you do hear what's probably going to become a familiar sound, and you see the plague bearer that's shambling towards you just get ripped into uh, a bloody pulp. I know I complained earlier about you filling things with slugs, but <laughs> but actually keep doing that. Right, right. Uh, you take your toughness tests for your orcs as well. Anybody who's poisoned. <laughs> Mine are both dead. <laughs> Guess they fail. <laughs> they, they never had a chance. Not gonna do it. All right. Remember, give yourself plus one for outnumbering. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna start uh, and use a special move. I'm gonna do a salvo attack and go full auto and fire okay. all of the bullets in my pistol at this guy to try to offset the <laughs> incredible. Uh, penalties that I have incurred. All right. Like, what does that do? Smog. Um, it adds a number of dice to your ballistic tests equal to the salvo rating of the gun. Okay. And how uh, much is that? It's normally just one for the pistol, but I took the talent Mordaka, which increases the salvo value of any <laughs> weapon I wield by plus a rank. So it's three oh, dice. That's, that's amazing. And then plus one because you outnumber. So you are technically in combat with a pistol, so you get the bonus. Cool, because that... Oh, is that the, like, the 7DN or whatever that we have? Uh, yeah, well, let's see how it goes. Nice work. Just fucking die. Oh, there oh. it is. Critical hit and a ton of sixes. Two shifts. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good one. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw. I got four glory. I'm just gonna do damage and then damage again. Sounds uh, like a good plan. And then roll damage. Damage. That looks pretty good. Oh yeah. Uh, Twenty-one AP. Yep. Three. And then you're critical. Oh yeah. <laughs> this girl blow. Crimson showers the ground. The battlefield is a gory spectacle of spilled blood and unsure footing. 
Uh, suffer a mortal wound. Each character engaged with the target must pass agility or fall over. <laughs> All right. Well, make your test. And uh, you may describe how this guy dies in a shower of gore and custom mega goodness. Uh, so the blue fire of the pistol erupts into this guy, um, spraying the gross yellow and greenish pus that they're all filled with over uh, myself and the storm boy next to me and the various, you know, trash pile that we're standing upon and struggling over. Um, and as, as that happens and he bleeds out and tries to like grab onto our legs with its dying breath, we uh, take this agility test and see what what happens and I probably fall over. I love it. <gasps> A critical? Critical hit. He passed. Steel Ripper makes it. He kicks the guy in the head and <laughs> is not affected by <laughs> the gross sludge. Uh, <laughs> and what about your boy here? Agility. Not as well. Okay. He, he eats it. He prone. Okay, so pretty impressive. Uh, the boy can go, though. He hasn't actually taken his turn yet. Oh, boy. Oh, you can move as well, because you, you attacked first, if you want to move anywhere. Oh, yeah, I guess I'll, uh, join the gang up here. Uh, wait, how? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll go up there. How fast are these guys? That's six, normally. Uh, and it doesn't cost anything to get up on your own turn, right? Uh, honestly, I'm just, not sure. Aim. I think that's Let's it. See. You just can't, like, use a special attack or something like that. So he's gonna move up and do... Wait, how far do these guys... It's a free action. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll just kind of regroup a little bit. And okay. That'll be it for now. Loctar, you guys have secured the west side of the landfill. All right. Uh, the packs that we stole from the guard, are they the same speed as the Storm Blaze? Uh, did I actually put it on your character sheet or no? I didn't. I don't have it on mine. Okay, uh, hold on. Through a grav it, is shoot? It a grav shoot? It, yeah. is a gra it uses the rules for the grav shoot, but it also can act as a... Uh, jump pack. It's a special version that they had. Okay. So, it, you know, rather than just like firing it off like a rocket, kind of like the Storm Boys do, you can use it to hover once you're in the air rather than just doing jumps. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was the same speed or not. Um... um. It would be the same speed, yes. So we can go 12. Correct. Are you just going straight in? Yeah, we're just going to oh, yeah. charge in. All right. Love it. Wow. The, the Storm Boys can potentially knock them over if they charge with the thunder, Thunderous Impact. There you go. Just... Reading those rules. <clears throat> So make a pilot test against the target's defense. <laughs> and, and they also get a uh, bonus to their move speed, I think, because of full throttle. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, so I have, um, but one of them is exhausted, so I don't know if I, oh, if he can probably do that. Not. Yeah. Rip to he, exhaustion. If he's exhausted, then he can't do um like a charge. Yeah, so this one so, on top isn't he says isn't in combat because he's the exhausted one, so he's just over there. Well, he can still move and then just attack. He just can't do his charge. Can you okay. run while exhaust? No. Well, Fringe. you can only walk, crawl, or perform a basic combat action. But his he's using the jump pack, so I mean, I'd still let him use the jump pack to do his twelve space move, mm -hmm. and then he just do a regular attack. 
I mean, because um, he got, I mean, all he's got to do is press the button on his jetpack, right? He doesn't have to, you know, that's a thing. <laughs> it's easier than crawling. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for an orc, that's really all it is, is a button, so. Uh, so I'll use my pilot test against his, is it his defense, I said? Okay, his defense is three. Or maybe it's like a lawnmower where you gotta pull a cord. To get <laughs> that would going. be so much cooler. Oh, no. <laughs> Complication. That's bad, isn't it? Please let it explode. Ah, uh, hold on. Doesn't something Thunders? happen with them? Uh, so it, full throttle has a bad thing, but Thunder's impact doesn't say. Yeah, I would. I would imagine it would use the same rule as full throttle. Uh, so on a one, the jump pack malfunctions. They suffer D3 mortal wounds and cannot use the jump pack this turn. So your 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 thing like explodes before you take off. So you're you're still back over where you uh, uh where you would have been. He was. This one was over here. And he takes oh, good. One that, was, mortal. that was for him. Okay, I thought that was for you. It's like oh no. No. All right. I, don't, uh, I don't think I can use Thunderous Impact with Loctar, can I? No, that's right. Because um, he doesn't have that. Yeah, it's an ability. It's like a talent, basically. Okay. Then we'll do that. So, oh, so you, put, you have the guard jump pack, so yours isn't like a crappy version that can explode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my better. So my exhausted guy <laughs> is going to Choppa. Uh, he is exhausted and poisoned, so he is the end. I think we said six, five. Yeah, just roll it over. Oh god. Out. He does hit though, but he does have a complication. Dropped weapon. Okay. Somehow in the fight, the axe goes flying off into the distance, but 11 damage will actually hurt this thing. Not bad for a orc boy. Okay, Loctar? Hey, Loctar's gonna go in. Just he's gonna to get... Leslie, this guy? <laughs> and he's gonna get uh, plus one for outnumber and yep. two for charging? Yes. Correct. Uh, you hit him. Two shifts. Shifts can always be just as good with that weapon. Yeah. Oh, oh baby. Fifteen <laughs> damage. All right. That is a huge hit. Staggering the plague bearer. Disgusting, vile body fluids spraying everywhere. It's disgusting, but it is still standing. And that is the end of the round. At the top of the next round, the lid slash... Did everybody go? The top of the round, the lid slash door to this container gets ripped open, and you see this amalgamation of hulking tentacles and writhing flesh toothy bits and bony spikes protruding from every angle as a wicked mutated spawn of chaos pulls itself free and joins the initiative at initiative four wow Fuck. and it is a large target it's massive the remaining plague bearers this one is going to swing at uh ya boy Actually, no, he'd probably swing at you, Loctar, because you just stabbed him. I think that was the boy that stabbed him. Mm, I guess you both stabbed him, didn't you? Oh, sounds right to me. I mean, he's a demon, though. He's not stupid. He knows who the bigger threat well, is here. No. I mean, he's a demon sure? of Nurgle. If it, was, if it was a Nurgling, I'd give it to you. But he's, he's not a like demon. Either. It's not like they're smart. I need, a, I need a soul for the grandfather. The soul's a soul, right? Yep. All right, that will be 11 damage. And you are getting poisoned. Well, you get poisoned if you take wounds, I should say. Hey, I'm going to roll my determination. Soaks two. Soaks two. 
I'm gonna take one wound. In case you are poisoned, then. And the other one comes sauntering over through the garbage. Let me help you, brother. Back to back, brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually what they say when things are about to go real, real bad. Yep. <laughs> okay, shifting for two damage. Or for two shifts. Uh, ew, nothing on his shifts. 11 damage. Okay, that could have been a lot worse. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Spawn of Chaos is next. I'll roll a d4 for the rest of you guys, because it's going to come eat one of you. Oh, okay. So uh, we'll do a one for this Storm Boy, two for Rippa, three for Peppa, and four for the other Storm Boy that misfired. Oh, he's go. He senses the weakness as it comes barreling down the pile of garbage <laughs> into the Storm Boy whose rocket misfired. Oh, thank God. Uh, let's see what this thing does. Oh, Architect of Ruin. This uh, The GM gains a point of ruin at the start of each of this creature's turns. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Definitely. Oh, and uh, it it's terrifying. Anyone who can see this threat must make a DN5 terror test. Aww. And it has hideous mutations. We roll for its mutation at the start of every turn. Oh, boy. Okay, everybody, please give me the terror test. Nope. No, no, no. What does what does terror do for reference? I don't know. Oh, I'm on the right page. Um... If you pass, you may act normally. If you fail, you suffer all the effects of fear, and you must use every action available on each of your turns to move as far away as possible until you no longer have line of sight to the source of terror. Terror lasts until the end of the scene or until an ally passes a leadership test with a DN of 2 plus the terror value. Uh, I think it's DN 5, fellas. Sorry. And that's with fear on top of that, seven? If you're feared, yes. Neat. Well, let's see if I can get that with two dice. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Lockhart pass with a critical? Oh my gosh, we got somebody. What He's a king. He's the one that needs to. It's true. How tall is this building? Can I just get on the other side? Well, oh, yeah, yeah, and these all these garbage piles are big enough where you can't see the other side if you're on the ground level. Like, okay. you and you and this boy are on the ground level right now. Uh, you can kind of just see the, the picture, so... Uh, Loctar, I think you got shifted. I think you were standing here, weren't you? Yeah. Somebody got moved. Okay, so it looks like Loctar is the only one to pass his terror test. Yeah. Everyone go screaming and running in every direction. And for its mutation, it has, whoops, a one. It has razor claws. So it has different attack profiles depending on what it rolls here. So razor claws. A complication. It scores a hit with a shift, which is going to do, oh boy. 16 damage AP4. Ooh. The Ooh, Storm Boy, I'm, I'm assuming, is ripped in half as this thing just picks it up and tears him apart. Unless he has a way to survive, but I doubt that. No. Okay. <laughs> Go full no, defense. He does not. Go <laughs> full defense? <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll, buddy. <laughs> hey, you never know. Maybe he has really high agility or initiative or whatever. Set up the thing as, he's, as he's getting picked up and ripped in half, he was just like, just go full defense, bro. Dodge, <laughs> <laughs> dip, dive, and dodge. Well, he's dead. Um, the complication out of ammo. Jesus Christ, game. Okay, it fucking slips down <laughs> the fucking a pile of garbage and it gets prone as it's devouring what's left of that orc. So nice. you have one magical turn to make something happen here. Uh, a Peppa. Who uh, is I failed my terrified. terror test, so I just have to run, right? You have to get out of line of sight of the spawn. Would uh, this side be considered out of sight, or do we need to be like over here? I'd say at least here. 
Okay. Can I pick up my heavy bolter before I flee? Probably not, because it says you have to use all available actions to run. Gotcha. All right. Well, then I hunker down right here. Okay. And that's my turn, right? Uh, yep. Your boys are dead. Steel Ripo. Uh, I guess oh, or more maneuverable. I wanted to try to get on the other side of this. Wait, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're we're over here. Okay. Uh, would it be possible to lob a stick bomb over the building and hit the chaos spawn with it? Mm -hmm. it says you must use every available every action available on each of your turns to move as far away as possible i would say on this turn no because i think you'd just be spending your time running but now that you're hidden assuming you don't see it again next turn i think you could you could try that okay uh what else can we do here Nothing. I think that's it for this turn. Yeah, it's just hide. Yeah. Lock tar. You guys all left me to die. Everybody's retreating. The spawn uh, is a little distracted though right now. Okay. Um my storm by uh do I need to roll leadership for him too then? Oh yeah, if you didn't already. As soon as this thing emerges, you guys have to make the test. Let's see what he does. Oh, complication even better. Warp interference? No. Okay, he drops, he throws his gun down and starts running, just completely forgetting the fact that he has a jump pack and just goes screaming over the hill. Uh, the Plague Bear is going to get an attack of opportunity on him. And he does hit for 12 damage. I think I finished him off, so. He did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's out of uh, shock. Okay, Loctar, you are the lone orc remaining as everyone has bailed on you. All right, well, I'm a boss killer, that plague bearer. <laughs> now, might I suggest you could... I should not have ten rune. I think I was down to six. Um, you could attempt a multi-attack to try to hit both of these guys. Okay. And... So... Every time you multi, you can attack as many targets that are in range that you want, but each one you do adds another plus two to the defense. So if you do a multi-attack against two guys, you're adding plus two to their defense for each of them. So it becomes DN five for each of them? Yes. Okay. Um... Are you poisoned? Oh, I am poisoned. Uh, so it'd be defense seven. Seven. Just a thought. I, I I forgot you were poisoned. Yeah, I'm gonna just do the one that's almost dead. Okay. <sighs> oh no! Complication okay. and no success. Oh, well, one success. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my last wrath for that. Okay, seems like a good idea. Shit. Uh... Oh, oh, three successes. I'll let you use a glory if you want. Okay, glory. For sure. Ooh. Yes! It is a hit! That should kill him. So, boss killer does 10 damage. 10? And then roll, roll your ED for that, too. Okay, so he has 4 ED. Oh, yeah. Another 4 wounds. Okay. That is enough! Plague Bearer is destroyed. I'll swallow your soul. Oh, wait, he's the one on the initiative track. Let's not delete him. We'll just leave him there. Okay. Uh, he dead. I think that's it. Yeah, I think I think I'm I'm done. All right. Turn three. The remaining plague bearer is going to attempt to attack you. So, oh wait, I forgot. Hold on. What's up, Sean? Uh, I was gonna ask how terror works now that we're hidden away from it. Uh, it says terror lasts until the end of the scene or until an ally passes a leadership test with a DN of two plus the terror value. So it's DN seven against this thing. Uh, I guess I would let you do your own willpower test to t try to break out of it now that you're hiding. Okay. 
Well, it, the, basically what the rules are saying is you have to run until you're out of line of sight, but you're still affected by terror for the entire scene. So as soon as you see that thing again, you're going to start running again. Right. Uh, well, Eric, we have yeah, glory. Do you, you... do you have any wrath left, Sean? Yeah, I have wrath. Well, I mean, like I said, a house rule, you can use wrath to get rid of a condition. Oh, I'll definitely use so, that. Uh, yeah. But Eric, we have glory. So if you want to seize the initiative and not get shanked by a plague bearer. Yes, I will do that. Ooh, <laughs> look at him reading the rule book. <laughs> We're going to win this fight to. somehow. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to drag ourselves over the finish line, kicking and screaming. It's because of terror. five weeks reading the rules to figure out how we can not die. <laughs> <laughs> at least someone puts the time in between. Yeah, no, use. you know, yeah. Well, you gave us the rule book, so we got to use it. Uh, that's That's how it's done, man. Go for it, Loctar. All right, boss killer, don't fail me. Critical! Oh, son of a... It's still a critical hit, though. Okay. Use another glory, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use another glory. Dude, if you get the six... Six! I'm going to fucking lose my shit. Ah! Oh. So <laughs> okay, no hit, but you do get a critical hit, so go ahead and roll a critical. Um, overpowering assault suffers three shock. Okay, well they don't have shocks. That's just straight mortal wounds to this guy. Nice. Plus two wanna... shock for every glory. Yep. Call that I'm... another one. Yeah. Total of five shock, so five damage. Okay, that fucks him up. Uh, now, as I was going to say before, I was so rudely interrupted. He needs to make a demonic instability test because all of his bros are getting banished back to the warp. And that is a willpower? Yes. What's the DN? Uh, well, it was DN3, but it's a little bit worse now. Nice. Okay, it's DN5. Man. Oh. Only four successes. He loses his grip on the material world and gets dragged back screaming to the realm of chaos, leaving the spawn who is up next. Um, well, it's going to spend its turn standing up. And let me see, what is it going to do here? Let's roll for its attack thingy. Three grasping tendrils. This gives it a ranged four attack. Uh, he is out of range right now. So he just stands up, tentacles flailing, but there's nothing in range for him to reach. So. Because I didn't move. Can I still move? Oh, yeah, you still would be able to move, too. <laughs> Away. <laughs> Get your asses in line. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it definitely wouldn't be doing anything then. It's just standing up wondering what the hell's going on. Okay. Peppa! You hear Loctar shouting and the chaos spawn writhing. All right, well, uh, we're going to use a wrath and uh, clear out this terror. Okay. Oh, okay. Not that. And then we know that we're going to have to fucking upgrade our willpower. <laughs> we're going to be fighting... Chaos dudes. Guys, if you uh, don't upgrade your willpower, I think the whole campaign. <laughs> so many things to upgrade. So he's going to move back, pick up his weapon. Yeah. And, uh... So how far did I move? Two... I'm sorry, it's been exposed to the atmosphere for too long and it's destroyed. The end. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so glad bad things happened to me. So I move two. Now back three, four, five. Just get the high ground, you know? Really. Take him for what he's worth. Remember, it is a large target, so you get uh, bonus dice. Okay. Um, it should uh, automatically count that. I think we tested this last time, but go ahead and try. Okay. Because um, I have 10 dice normally, or in short range, it should be 12. And then it's giving me an extra dice from somewhere. All right. Uh, oh, no, my... Okay, yeah, we'll f fucking find out, I guess. Another complication. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> All right. Well, that shift is going to go towards um, damage, I guess. 
Yeah, it is. Okay. 19 AP Respectable one. 19 damage. Weapon stuck. Okay, so as you brace yourself, you start opening fire, ripping uh, into this thing. Roll again if you're not using a melee weapon. Oh, okay, well then go ahead and roll again. Fine, I won't narrate. God damn. Yeah, you fall I'll prone run. instead. <laughs> All right. I mean, you're standing on the back half of the thing, right? So you're like, the force knocks you down as you kind of slide down the uh, the mountain of trash there. Uh, and Peppa's just hearing, like, Benny Hill music as he fights. Yep. Okay, I'm going to spend a point of ruin to let this thing roll 66 determination. What? Because it doesn't have shock, so it does this instead. It's going to soak two, three, four points of that damage. Okay. How much did you do? Uh, 19 minus one. Okay. You rip into this thing and chunks of it go flying off. It screeches in pain. Its flesh is rippling and reshaping itself. Uh, but it is still moving. Uh, Steel Ripper, your turn. Alrighty. So, hmm. I think actually I'm also going to burn a wrath to uh, compose myself vis a vis the terror. And okay. pop, pop my head out uh, on the right side and take a shot at him with with the gun. Go for right it. Side? Well, let's go on the Peppa side. We can all be on the same same end, right? One, two, three, four, five. Let's go. Let's go a little further this way, right? Wait, yeah, you got, you got side there. That's fine. What's what's the range on this thing? Six. Two, three, four, five, six. Great. Perfect. Um. So yeah, I shoot. Let's see. Slugger. D end of tests. That's all fine. Um. Short range, and he's also big nope that's too many there we go that's probably right wow great hits hey. look at all those shifts i'm gonna throw one for glory and then damage and uh hey. damage whoa Ooh, 22 oh. ap3 even with the determination, that is not going to do it. The spawn rips in twain as your beam of blue energy cuts right through it, leaving a stinking, bloody, smoking, screeching, and flailing mess of a creature. Drop site secured. Woo! I was really sweating there for a second. <laughs> Had our last storm boy on the back. Did, did we win? You got what it takes to join the big league. I think it's only fitting we play the, the theme ripoff song we have here. <laughs> well done. Drop site secure. Uh, the rest of the orcs have a tough go of it. But now that you've got proper fighting orcs and the storm boys who can move around much more nimbly than the plague bearers can... And with word of Loktar bravely leading the charge and cutting down all who oppose him, it is not long before you have a nice chunk of this uh, little area for your boys to come down and properly loot. And loot they do as dropship after dropship of Mulgrim's Death Skulls in particular uh get down here and just start going to town, loading up every bit of metal they can, digging through heaps of garbage, much of it actual, you know, 
uh, biological garbage or, you know, toxic waste and just all sorts of weird shit down here. But you do find plenty of bits of scrap as well. So if you didn't add the scrap already, go ahead. You guys give yourself a total of 16. Unless you already did the eight, then just add another eight to your scrap pile. <laughs> all right. Well, you have made mincemeat of the demons. Well done. How would you like to celebrate, and what is next on the menu here? Good question. Good question. Okay. Uh, well, I think. Uh, so we were gonna go to Fenfros, Dunvern, Dunvern, Dunvern. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Hold on. <laughs> That's one, quite the trip. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve weeks. Okay. But we also have. Warp travel. We do. Okay. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, I mean, we've got like 20... 22 scrap now, right? Yes. So, let's have fucking Moldrum start making some dope-ass shit. But I'm thinking... Mega armored knobs? You know, knob squad. Uh... What else do we got? Death dreads? I was thinking of maybe some dreads or something. Yeah. They could have more armor. Maybe outfit all of the boys with heavy armor. Because right now all of our boys have like just the, the orc flak and they are getting ripped apart. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh look, our toughness for orcs are taking seven wounds from these dudes with las guns. Hey, man, that's why they're yeah. six-point models, you know? Yeah, yeah, but we don't have 400 of them, Chris. T-shirt safe. No, you've got like 6,000 of them. More than that, maybe. So, and then, you know, Pep is going to start trying to, you know, I guess doing whatever the upgrades he can to make them cyborgs. <laughs> okay. We'll play Blade Runner in Wrath and Glory, Chris. We can do it. <laughs> These are my replicant orcs. Yeah. Replicorks. <laughs> Replorks, <Guns>. yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so... It'll probably be like a day or so of looting. Uh, now that you guys have some free time. There's rotations of your squads, because they can only be down there for so long because of the atmosphere. But um, it's basically just a constant stream of your shuttles going back and forth between the planets. And, uh, well, I guess you actually just land the fucking Rex Machina down there, and they basically just turn it into, like, a little forward operating base and just start hauling scrap in there and filling cargo hold after cargo hold of stuff. So, yeah, I think, uh, just decide what you guys want to, um, maybe do with your scrap, and then are we still going to head off to Dunavern? Oh, oh, yeah, we're, like, we're heading out to the fringe. Maybe uh, hunker down for the long haul. Set up some projects and I don't know. Maybe some entertainment for the boys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we gotta get some projects worked on. We have the scrap now. So some some diff trades. Some I don't even know what the work like airships are called. Fighter bombers? There's, there's fighter bombers, DACA jets, and I think there's three. I don't know what the other one's called. Yeah, some of those. Give ourselves the air superiority. Can we just like slap some big engines on asteroids on the asteroid belt and <laughs> fire them towards Zunivern? We'll make rocks. Rocks, I think, are a little beyond the scope of this. That's like <laughs> a whole ship, like a starship, so. Uh, no. Oh, there's also, there's Burnabamas, Blitzabamas, and <laughs> Daka Jets. Okay. Those are the three in the, in the tabletop. Oh, I think there's also the Wazbomb Blastajet? What is that? It's the a mech all the above. jet. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, let's start making some, some 
some jets. I just want to say right. flyers, then we can get into specifics later. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, need, we need the grot tank. The what? The grot tanks. <laughs> I don't know if Fortral still makes them. They're like cool. little they do. tiny tanks. They are, do they? they? Are, yeah, they are. They are still there. <laughs> Was an old Mulgrim working on some sort of shield? Maybe we get a we're looking at defensive. Maybe not just uh, all scrap. We have uh, Thinky Defense. Uses energy. Hmm. All right. So, what are we? What are we thinking to have him make first? Uh oh! Look at these little guys. Yep, that's the Grot tanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Aren't they adorable? Uh, literally, the word I was going to use is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Oh, that's great. Well, one man, like, orc tanks. <laughs> that's like a little soda. We could use some more heavy weapons. Uh, Want to train some of the boys to be flash geats? That are rockets. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Looks like the engineers are going to have a bit of a task. I'll tell you what, to, uh... So you're not too overwhelmed. You guys can pick up to three projects to have him work on okay. at a time. How's in the crowd on Telsor's Bliss looked like we were uh, sort of outmatched without any anti-air. So maybe the rockets would be a good way to go. Yeah, with all help against other vehicles. Okay. Tank busters. Tank busters. <laughs> okay. Can do that. Um, and then we wanted Def Dreads too. With the Def Dreads or the Kill Cans? Which one's the bigger one? The, the bigger version. one's the Def Dreads. Dreads. The, right. the Dread. Yeah. Kill Cans are piloted by Grots. Oh, they are? Oh. Yes. I forgot that. You take them in squads, whereas the Dreads are mm. single, single ones like Space Marine Dreadnoughts. Nice, okay. nice. We can try some dreads. Nice, nice. Yeah, let's do dreads. Okay, so tank buster, dreadnought, death dread, and what else? We'll figure out the cost of this later. Well, I guess, or is there anything that we'd want to do, like for aiding personal equipment, or is that just going to be our standard, like acquisition? What a... That'd be acquisition tests. What about, um, modifying the vehicles that we just got in like could we turn them into like trucks or something um i would they... say it'd just be better just to build your own trucks like because oh, okay. they're, they're already kind of acting as trucks they've already got stats and everything we'll assume that your guys you know deck them out to be orky uh but i think you know otherwise just keep them the way they are okay um do you want some bombers then? Yeah. Nice, nice. That could work. Oh man, it's getting crazy here. Okay. <laughs> As it works, we're, tend we're, to do. We're building a wa. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we got tank busters, death dreads, and flyers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gucci. Well, he will certainly get to work on that, as will the many, many new orcs that are part of the tribe. And yeah, then I think eventually it's time uh, to make your way to Dunavern. Unless there's anything else you guys want to do, any acquisitions or other projects you want to work on? Um, yeah, I probably want to do acquisitions now before anything happens, right? If you want, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Peppa will try to get Mega Armor. <laughs> Okay, Mega Armor, I have this in my notes because you asked last week. It <laughs> is value 9. Its rarity Eesh. is very rare, so the total DN is 12. Okay, okay. DN is 12. So, yeah, uh, I guess just roll to see how much wealth you have to spend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Three successes, so nine wealth. Okay, and you've, you've got that much, I'm assuming? I have 12, but now I'm down to three. Okay. Oh, ho, 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 ho. 
Peppa wheeling and dealing with every orc that he can find, every mech boy, every big mech, and maybe even bribing Mulgrim a little bit, uh, who quickly kicks you out of his workshop. Uh, um, but you get your green hands on the coveted, perhaps the very first suit of mega armor that your entire tribe has. And so now Loctar has to kill you because I you're threatening that. his position as war boss. <laughs> we'll just find Peppa with a whole bunch of knives and shit in his back in his workshop. All right, yep. So Loctar, you got one magical turn of stabbing before he's in the suit of armor to kill him. <laughs> um, I'll give you a stealth test because you're a blood axe. Okay, there I'm go. trying to find the mega armor. Oh my goodness. All right. So, listeners, if you're not familiar with Mega Armor, it's as big and bad as it gets for orc armor for a single orc. Worn by Mega Knobs, Mechs, and War Bosses, Mega Armor is about as sophisticated as orc armor gets. That's gets with an S, not a Z. Consisting of heavy metal plates powered by hissing salvage hydraulic systems, Mega Armor is almost as loud and fearsome as those who wear it. Whilst wearing this armor, you are considered to be a large target. Enjoy, sir. It has an armor value rating of 7, and it has the cumbersome and powered 4 uh, traits. So, powered 4 gives you a bonus to your strength, I believe. Equal oh, yeah. To that number. It, it just boosted my strength to eight. And cumbersome, I'm not sure. I can't click on the trait here, so I don't know what that does. Let me try. Uh, I cannot run or sprint. Oh, okay. Nice. Well, darn. You can only move six and have, like, 20 resilience. Must be nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you've got that going for you. That's pretty sweet. Anybody else want to make an acquisition test? Acquisition is your influence dice, right? Yeah, but if since you're dealing with orcs, you can use your strength instead if that's higher. Strength. Your unmodified strength, Sean. Not your modified strength with mega armor. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> so, okay. So my, I have an idea. Oh no. Uh, I like where this is going. <laughs> to upgrade Boss Killer. Oh, hmm. Is it possible to orcify it and get it mastercrafted? Ooh. Yeah. I mean, it's orcs, so absolutely. All right, so I'm going to shoot for the mastercrafted. Okay. Let me get. What's the value on mastercrafted? Seven. Seven, and what's the rarity? Uh, very rare. That's plus three, so it's DN10. Oh. DN10? Yep. Oh, no. The value is the base, and then the rarity is a DN penalty. So very rare, and it's plus three. Can yeah. I give Loctar the rest of my money? No, he has to do this himself. Ah, shit. All right, well, I'll give it a shot. I don't think an orc would give another orc money, unless he was extorting it at a high interest rate. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> That's one success. Yep, nope. Would you like to use a point of glory? <laughs> <laughs> Got a dick move, Chris, but I appreciate it. Uh, do you have any wrath left? Nope. Oh, okay. Not unless, not unless I, I I did a go fast to this turn, this game, which I did not. Mm, no. Okay. Do you have nine wealth? No. Okay. I don't. I don't gain wealth like the others, or like uh, just Peppa. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just Peppa. Well, I guess uh, you guys would. Now that I'm thinking about, it, you guys should probably get at least one wealth for uh, looting this planet for sure. It's a very orky thing to do. Nice. That still doesn't help. But thank you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to try to negotiate with Peppa now that he's upgraded into his uh, big suit. He would like to 
pawn off his heavy armor for uh, a couple teeth and save himself the trouble of carrying it around. That's fine, mate. Yeah, I suppose you can do that if you want. I guess with the upgrade... Uh... Yeah, do you want to try to get anything? Can I also try to mastercraft the custom slugger? Yeah. Which, yeah, is seven very rare for a total of ten? Yep. Alright, I'll be close. Let's see what we can do. Um... Can you use your strength or influence, whatever's higher? Yeah, we'll do that. That's three. That, the DN doesn't matter, right? That's not, that's not great, but what did I Two need? Ten? Not a 10. That gets me reliable. I would really like that. <laughs> I do have a wrath left. Uh, uh, I'll give it a shot. Six. <gasps> That's four. All right. I'm going <laughs> to blow the like six wealth that I have. Do you want to spend a point of glory to see if you can? Oh, I guess. Spend yeah. Less wealth. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Got three left. Hey, oh, there you go. Another one. Nice. All right. That leaves me with uh, two. All right, so is that something in our folders here? I think there was a bunch of weapon mods, but I don't Yeah, know it's probably an equipment. What to do? Can I just drag it onto here? Oh, Upgrades. it looks like it worked. Cool. Reliable. So what does Mastercraft do? It gives it reliable and, I, and plus two to any attack test. Oh, cool. Yeah, all right. So what do you do to make your weapon master crafted? What does it look like now? <laughs> uh, basically, it just has a lot of heat sinks and vents and things that fire gouts of blue flame uh, in it, order to prevent it, it a, from discharging into water, my water, own face. A water cooling <laughs> yeah. system like yeah. a high-end PC? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's like a an office jug that's at the top that just slowly... <laughs> Glug, 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 glugs into the <laughs> oh yeah thing. but it's the full size one right and this tiny little pistol but the giant the giant uh water fountain jug pretty big yeah it's like a super soaker it goes to a backpack <laughs> it's got like 30 fans on it to keep it cold love it okay uh well with that i think you guys are off to dunavern Unless there's anything else you need to do before you leave. Last nope. chance. I think that covers it. Okay. Well, we will do another round of your warp travel here. How far of a journey is it, Sean? 12 weeks. 12 week journey. A small odyssey across <laughs> the system. Yep. Going through the out to the very edge of the system. All right. Uh, first things first. Do you allow him to prepare to read the warp before you go? Yes. All right, Vashir. Do your thing, buddy. Brushes it. He'll give you guys a point of glory. Nice. And somebody roll me a d10 for the stability of the route. Somebody else want to get this this time? Sure, I can roll. D10. An 8. Oof. Uncharted course. Increase the DN of charting the course by 2. All right. And then... Would you like to prepare for ill wardings, Captain? Yes. Okay. Roll me a DN5 leadership test. Oh, I just realized we didn't roll for the orc. Uh, the orcs trying to fight when you guys traveled last time. That's okay. It was only a week and a half. Five successes. Just enough. Okay. And then roll a D100 versus the morale of your ship. 
please. Just the vindication. You guys are good. You're still a 90 something, right, Matt? I th yeah, I think he's it. Like okay. 90. 95. All right. So, Vishir, as always, asks if you want him to divine the auguries before transitioning. He does so. He tells you it'll be a difficult journey. It's a far distance, about as far out of the edge of the system as we can get without leaving it. Since we haven't been out that far, I don't have any direct knowledge of the course. You then begin to prepare your boys, getting the orcs and the regular crew ready. And uh, it seems the orcs are just are just you know, on cloud nine with all the victories and scrap and they're busy looting and scavenging and putting things together. So uh, they don't seem at all concerned about this. And uh, the crew seems to be accepting their fate now that uh, their overlords are green, no longer human. And they seem to be uh, starting to follow your orders a little bit, uh, Loctar. And uh, it seems they are steeled, they've steeled their souls for what's to come on the voyage. As this is happening and you're doing all the usual rituals that the crew does, maybe cracking heads as orcs to get your boys in line and ready, uh, there all of a sudden is a rumble rips through the ship. Moments later, Peppa, you feel similar rumbles on your ship oh boy uh both the vindication and the purging fury your warning systems klaxons and other things are going off it seems there has been some sort of damage an explosion perhaps just as you guys are about to start transitioning into the warp what the Get a screen. Yeah, can we scan for? I guess what's going on. Yes. Jump down to do repairs. What exactly are you doing? Well, you gotta figure out what happened first, right? So I guess pull pull comms around the ship, or do a diagnostic or anything like yes, that. Is there a like a viewport open that we can? Well, up, up on the bridge, there's definitely a viewport. Um, okay. You don't see anything out in front of your ships, either of you. Is there like a, yeah, like Matt said, like a diagnostics that tells us the various situations throughout the ship? Give me a DN5 investigation test. Would this use the uh, investigation or detection bonus of our ship, too? Yes. Okay. We got a nose for trouble here. No. Critical art complication. And both um, of you failed. Yes, I would like to use a glory. You're pretty close there, Peppa. There we go. Succeed, but with a complication. Well, the complication. Lost item. Okay. And Matt, are you going to use a glory as well? Uh, For five, I'd need to hit a six. There, it worked. Close to the end of the day, right? I'll do one, sure. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So, Peppa, um, you begin shouting orders to your crew, asking them what the hell's going on, scanning the ship, and having your subordinates report back to you. There is a report that there has been uh, some sort of hull breach uh, on the port side of the ship, uh, which is uh, the side that's facing the Vindication. So it's in between your ships, basically, is where something seems to have come from. Okay. And how many? You had just a basic success? Yeah. Yeah. That's all that you're able to get with the panic and commotion. Because keep in mind, this is happening like as you guys are about to start going into the warp. Uh, 
does. So like the the you know the the rift in reality is probably starting to open uh, as this is happening. Uh, can I just tell them to cordon off whichever section hull breached so we don't like I don't know vent air or whatever? Give me a leadership test, please. Oh, okay. Got yeah, one glory left. Uh, okay. Uh, no. Fuck you. Fuck you, dice. Okay. Both of your ships, the Vindication and the uh, Purging Fury, take five hull damage from whatever's exploded or destroyed or damaged you. Um, also, is uh, are you leaving Mulgrim in charge of the Rex Machina? Is he the captain of that ship? Is that the plan? Yeah, yeah. As he, uh, at least for now, while he's uh, heading the repairs. Okay. Just want to make sure where he's at. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there, as explosion goes off, uh, you shout orders to your crew, Peppa, but you can tell that they are screaming in panic, and not probably doing a great job of what you've asked them to do. I know what hit us. Are we still, like, making the transition or did we, did we cut that off? Uh, he was about to and eventually, you know, after this happens, uh, Vishir would come in and say, Captain, what's happening? We're about to transition. Whole breach. We're figuring it out. And I'm going to start sending a squad of boys down to the breach and figure out what's going on. All right. Vishir cuts back in. I need orders. Are we going or not? Hold. Okay. Uh, he's going to have to do a test to try to stop this. <laughs> Mulgrim is chiming in over his comms as well. Oi, what the hell's going on over there? Something's hit my ship. Do you see anything? Let me check, boss. Okay, Vishir fails the psychic mastery test. <laughs> so we're just going to get sucked through the work. Oh he boy, we get to start work work early. <laughs> he is unable to stop the transition as you see the warp uh, the warp engines continue to spool up. Orcs are trying to stop it, but things are exploding. Uh, down in the engine room, we probably see, you know, the, the ripples of reality kind of fading in and out of the ship. Orcs screaming, regular crew members screaming, clutching their heads as uh, the warp kind of spills over the ships. Well, if he can't do it, the other guy certainly can't, so I guess they're all going. Uh... Uh, Mulgrim will attempt his scan here to see what he can figure out. Uh, it was investigation, right, Sean? Yeah, investigation plus whatever your detection is. Oh, uh, what is it on the the Rex? Let's see. Oh, did I not? I was gonna say I, I thought I gave it stats already. The detection plus one. Okay. Mm, only two successes. It's like, oh, I don't know what it is, boss. I'm not getting a clear reading. Some sort of interference could be the warp storm. Oh, look like we're on our way now. All right. So the rift in the warp opens. More warnings going off as your ships are dragged, perhaps unwillingly, into that alternate dimension. Um, we'll do the rest of his rolls uh, next time. Uh, for Vashir. Uh, as this is happening, Loctar, you said you're going to send some boys down there to find out what's going on? Yes. Okay. Let me see what happens. Peppa, what are you doing on your ship? Anything? Um. <laughs> I, I, I see we're still moving into the warp. Yeah, you see the rip in space widen like a yawning maw and the blast shutters, you know, to cover the crew so they don't actually stare at this too long and go crazy, begin to lower uh, probably automatically at this point if you don't manually do it. Right. Um, 
yeah, uh, I guess uh, I'll give someone else the helm of the ship while I take some boys down and try to figure out what's going on. And have him, have I guess, have them take the leadership to try to make sure that everything's battened down and we don't start venting air <laughs> in the warp. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be fine. It's just, you know, it's this kind of thing happens. You know, it's yeah, it's Gork wills it, or possibly more. It's gonna be like a, a knob or something that I can give leadership to, right? Uh, oh, like up on the on the bridge? Yeah, yeah. Oh, to yeah, yeah. Man the helm while I'm away. Yeah, we'll assume there's a, either a mech or a knob you can put in charge. I like the idea that it's a knob. He just shouts orders, makes everybody else do everything. <laughs> exactly. He doesn't really know how to do it himself, whatever. True orky innovation. Okay. Um, let's see, what tests should the tr the orc boys make? Probably an awareness test to uh, see what they can find. That's a critical. Baby. Okay. And let's do a... All right. So, Loctar, you send a squad down to find out what's going on. Peppa, you grab a group of boys and head down there yourself, like the true leader that you're planning to become to overthrow Loctar's reign of, reign of terror on the tribe. Uh, You've been pretty successful with Loctar's <clears throat> boss. So. Uh, yeah, well, you're going down there yourself, so the boys are going to notice that. Anyway, yeah. um, so you go stomping down there with your boys uh, who are eager to join their mega armored boss. And um, give me a awareness test, please. Okay. An awareness test, I should say. Six successes with a critical and a shift. Holy shit. Okay. This happens at the same time, more or less. Maybe a little bit quicker for Pepper because he's on the smaller ship but there's orcs all over the place. So, Loctar, as you're waiting on the bridge to find out what the hell's going on, your boys get down there, and you hear over the comms, all of a sudden, it sounds like the sounds of a fight. You can hear gunfire and explosions and the sound of your orcs shouting and wawing and then screaming as they are being cut down. Boss, we's got intruders! What the hell got on my ship? Peppa, as he asked that question, oh, no. <laughs> you reach the area where your ship has been breached. Uh, you find an area where they have tried to close bulkheads to seal that off. Uh, but you get to a room near your... Uh, let me just make sure near your engines, near the engine room, the thrusters, you see that your boys, what's left of them down here, are engaged in a fight with huge armored warriors, which you guys probably have never seen before. But you see these humanoid warriors in black armor fully enclosed standing roughly eight feet tall yes their left arm rather than being the black of their armor is silver mm. uh -oh. with a large golden letter i over what looks like a backdrop of either names or phrases with a gold skull with a crossbones over that. You notice that on the right shoulder, each of them has a different symbol. None of them match. They're all different, um, different colors and different sigils on them. And you see, perhaps not to your knowledge, but maybe to your horror, a squad of five Death Watch Space Marines <laughs> yeah. tearing the shit out of your ship with holy fervor and a prayer to the Emperor on their lips. And that is where we'll call it for tonight. Whoa!
Well, Peppa might be fucked by himself, so we'll see. Just fire one of the boarding torpedoes onto <laughs> our ship and then get in it. <laughs> I fucking like that idea. Together. Through the warp. <laughs> through, through the warp. We're, you, there's just going to be a whole bunch of orc sigils. We'll be okay. In it red. <laughs> yep. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That'll be it for tonight. The Death Watch have finally caught up to the fleet. Join us next week to see if our heroes can survive the Emperor's Finest. Same time, same place, next week. Nighty-night.